works. Righteousness. We have Nicole, Nicole that's watching, and Juliet Forbes as well. And we have Nisi. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for all of you guys. It's wonderful to have you on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome in, welcome in. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Can you guys hear me very well? Can you guys hear me? I'm going to turn the volume up. Can you guys hear me? Are you guys able to hear me properly? Hallelujah. We got our mic here as well. <laughs> to pick up the sound. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today we're talking about getting unstuck. Getting unstuck. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm recording now and we're trying out, uh, as I said, we're trying out a new platform. Thank you, Jesus. I want you guys to invite some people in. Invite some people in. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dorothy Cook. Today we're talking about getting unstuck. Today we're getting, we're talking about getting unstuck. Coming out of stucktivity. <laughs> Amen. A lot of people have been stuck for the longest time and don't recognize that, you know, it's, it's a foul spirit. Getting stuck. Getting unstuck is so important in this season. Getting unstuck in this this season is very, very important. So today we want to look at we're gonna look at some scriptures, alright? And we wanna look at Luke ten. Luke 11 and 15 and it says but some of them said that he cast out demons by Beelzebub the rulers of the demons does he break the curse he cast out uh, demons by what a king and prince demon called Beelzebub or Baalzebub or Baal all right, there's another rendering of Baal. All right, that was the god who Jezebel served, uh, but it had a different name from a different province. Okay, so here it is when you begin to become unstuck, when you become to uh, begin to move in the best version of yourself, when you begin to move in the best ideal of God's glory for yourself, you will find that people will begin to say you're doing these things by another spirit. When you decide to come up and get out of the rat race, which in which you're doing racing with rats anyhow, but it's just a terminology. You'll find thank you, Jesus that people will begin to treat you different. People will begin to treat you different. Some people who you're once cool with, they will start to disconnect. They will start to show you funny comments. Some of them will start to act weird towards you. Some of them will begin to treat you strange. And some of them will say, you are doing these things by demons. You're doing these things by demons. In other words, when God has called you to be the deliverer to your family line, to be the deliverer to your community, to be the Zapat Panea for your workforce, to be the Zapat Panea for your church 
And that's what Pharaoh called Joseph when he saw the wisdom of being able to interpret dreams. He called him Zapat Pane. It means the Savior. It means Savior. When you begin to help people see Christ and his works, they will begin to come against the Christ in you. They will begin to come against the thing that God had brought you out of. All of the stuff that you went through, all of the being stuck, all of these things that are happening, it is not by chance that you're going through what you're going through. When you are called to a high level in God, there will be a crushing, there will be a breaking, there will be a shaking. There will be a process and time when people who you thought once had your back will begin to fight you. Because the word omnipotence, you see omnipotence, the, omni, the omnipotent God, the omnipotent one. It comes from the word potent or potential. Whenever you begin to operate in your potential of the presence of God, hallelujah, you will discover that every seed of greatness that has been planted in you has to germinate. And it germinates in darkness. It germinates in the soil. Then it takes heat and water. And it takes a lot of what? cultivation and pruning and also it takes a lot of time time is the revealer of all false prophets time will reveal every lie the greatest enemy of a false prophet or a wolf in sheep's clothing is time time will reveal everything and if they're doing something that <clears throat> that is undercover or conceal time will reveal it to you that's why they try to force you to move quickly they try to force you to make decisions quickly because they know that their corn is up that's why a corn man will always tell you that you need to move and act quickly because this thing is going to get really up okay because there is a season when god will bring your full potential many of you have not totally been seen yet because God is still cultivating you. <coughs> Excuse me. God is still cultivating you. God is still working out some things in your life. So he has you hid for a season. He has you hid. He's training you like he was training David with the lion and the bears and the fox and the wolves and whatever else, whatever predator, whatever else, uh, or, you know, predator that came out. To try and steal the sheep. He was giving him training for his confrontation with Goliath and ultimately with Saul. All right, He was training him for kingship. When you're training for kingship or queenship, it doesn't always feel good. It feels like you're stuck in a rut. It feels like, as a matter of fact, the prophecy that you got, it got worse. It felt like you had even more warfare after the man or woman of God prayed for you. It looked like it got worse. As a matter of fact, you don't even look like the prophecy that you got that day or that week or that month before. It was such a glorious prophecy and everybody was clapping for your prophecy. And it was so amazing that he called you out and singled you to give you that amazing prophecy and reveal to you the counsel, will, and heart of God. And then as you're on your way home, your tire gets flat. Then someone almost hits you. Then you found out that they cut your light off. And you found out that you have a bill due that you didn't even know you had. You see, this is what happens when you are moving to the next phase and dimension of your call in God and coming into your what? Full potential. Because for every wood that has been cut from a tree, there's a chair in it. There's a desk in it. For every vehicle or seed of your destiny... There is what? A time and a chance that happens to every man. You'll find it in Ecclesiastes. There's going to be a time and a chance that answer it all man. In other words, everybody has time and chance and God has given everyone the same measure of faith. You have to take that faith and develop that faith 
and you will surely succeed. You will surely succeed. Because I've seen that there is a time when the enemy will cause you to feel like you're not going anywhere. Let's look at some potentiality of what God sees in you when man don't even see it in you. Let's look at what God has done. God created man in his own image and likeness, and from the dust of the earth, he breathed into man's nostril the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He breathed into man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. In other words, God told you to have dominion and take authority over this earth and to rule. And why are we not ruling and reigning as the Lord said? He's not changed his mind. As a matter of fact, that was always his initial decree. Be fruitful and multiply because you have my breath in you. You have my image in you. Now you are here on planet earth as I am in the immensity of the universe and the heavens of heavens. For the heavens of heavens cannot contain him. God is so powerful and so omnipresent and omnipotent. He has to condense himself even in heaven. Heaven can't contain him. But he has to shrink himself, so to speak, into the heavens of heavens. Because heavens is his resting place. All right? he, sits, he sits on the heavens. It is just like a bench for him. And they are just discovering new galaxies with the new galaxies. And each one of them is a billion times, a billion times, and a billion times. So the galaxy is ever expanding. All right? And God sits on all of that. And it is his plaything. The immensity of his presence is not so much his size, but is the mind of God. The omnipresent mind of God. And when God breathed into you the breath of life, he breathed a part of his spirit and his nature into you. And so that anything that you come across, you should dominate. And not, not, I'm not talking about arrogance and pride and, and to be, you know, just a bully. I'm talking about in your sphere of influence and in the power that God has given you. He's called you to what? Dominate. He says, let us make man. Let us make man. Or the Adam, all right? Let us make the Adam. Let us make this new breed of being that is separate from the angels, just slightly lower than them, slightly lower than the Elohims. But also, they are superior in other ways because they are a direct creation from my hand and my fiat, my divine hand, mold them. And then I breathe into them. And they became living beings and they had sentience and they had rationality and intellect and they became a living soul. This is a new type of creation. This is a different species. And we were told to reign on terra firma. But because we allowed this snake that came into the garden to hoodwink us, all right, to hoodwink and to what steal what was given to us, and I'm sure the Lord watched it all, but he was seeing how man would handle things. God gives you something. He gives you a seed and watch how you steward that seed. The seed could be in the form of a revelation. It could be in the form of an idea. It could be in the form of a literal seed or it could be in the gifting of farming or whatever your talent is. Maybe it's doing here. Maybe it's coaching. Maybe it's... Uh, you know, playing the piano, or it, maybe it's singing. Whatever that seed is, he gives you it in seed form. That's why some people, the first time they try to sing, they got booed off stage. Yes, they got booed because they, they, you know, they know that they were supposed to sing and they know that the thing is in them, but they got booed or they didn't do well and they wanted to run from it and give up. But when they begin to work it and they begin to farm it and they begin to cultivate it and they begin to come into the reality that they could what they could take their training and their singing to another level so it brings into them what confidence to know that god is still working on them and through their trials tribulations even frustration god is molding and fashioning them into a what into a champion into success into a person who is going to be a winner 
have you ever had a person you said, man, I've been trying with this person for the longest time. I actually give up on them. You better tell him you give up on them. You might not even say that, but in your heart of heart, you say this is a lost cause. This man ain't never coming at this. This woman ain't gonna never give up this addiction. They ain't gonna never, they, you know, they just basically, they just keep doing the same old thing over and over again. And you give up on them. See, but God, he loves us so much that even that person who you give up on and you can't even say, you know, I can't tolerate them no more because I've had it with them. That's what the Lord takes over. And then you might not see the person for a year or two, maybe even three years, or falling in Christ Jesus. Yes, God is willing to back even the underdog. God always works with the majority. He works with people who society don't want. He went to fish's perspective because it is your mind and your thoughts that God is after. He's after molding your mind because it's the first level of where God has to get you to. He has to get you to change your mind. Let's look what God says. God says, let man have dominion over the fishes of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle of the field, over all earth and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female, he created them. Then he blessed them and said unto them, be fruitful and multiply fill the whole earth subdue it and god said unto them have dominion over the earth the fish the land the sea and over everything that moves upon the earth god created us in his image to be a dominator you are to dominate you are to dominate because you are made in the image and likeness of god and so because you came from the dust of the earth god Read and demand. See, God take the lowest thing, the lowest substance, and he fashioned it. You think he didn't know what he was doing? He fashioned you. He fashioned you lovingly, and he fashioned you fearfully and wonderfully. Yes, yes, and people may not see that. That's why some of your cousins, them, they're blind. Some of your uncles, them, are blind. Some of your friends, them, they're blind because they didn't write you off. They didn't see you in one position. They didn't see you in one spot. They didn't see you as a person who always could be this way. Yes, they almost could write your book because they didn't see you in one particular way. But God is not finished with you yet. You're coming out of this stuckness. You're coming out of this stagnation. You're coming out of this limitation. Yes, God has made you a champion. And he wants you to what? To move heaven and earth so you could fulfill your call. The greatest thing and the greatest tragedy is for you to come from from all the way from heaven. That's where you came because you came out of God and God birthed you through your mother, your mother's womb, uh, using your father's uh, sperm cell. All right, and you came here with so much potential, and yet for you to leave without fulfilling that is a travesty of epic proportion, and is a tragedy. It is such a hideous tragedy because the graveyard is now consumed all of the giftings and the call of men all right that are supposed to empower this earth and supposed to leave an impact here and are supposed to believe creations and designs and books and revelations and insight and and inventions that we've seen yet because the spirit of the living god is ever creative and ever active and so when you're stuck in a bad 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 situation it simply means that you have come to that place where the enemy has lied to you. Society has beaten you up and you've taken a bruising. And the enemy has always reminded you that you are no good, that you cannot move to the next level, that you cannot be anything, that you are always going to be like this. And so we bought into a lie. If God told you that you have dominion over all the fish of the earth and you were created in his image and you are to move like him and he breathed, into your nostril that is a personal bread the royal hakadash was breathed into your nostril and you became a living soul then it must be it must also say that we have the mind of god when you have the mind of christ you should know who you are but most of us still haven't figured out who we really truly are because society conditioning whether it's cultural whether it's familial whether it's through uh, peer pressure where it's true, even some indoctrination from our particular religious uh, upbringing, we have not allowed the true, the true nature of the spirit of the living God to come through us and to be 
who we are because we are still trapped in people's opinion. God is still molding you and God is still going to release you and God has not finished yet. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what they say. I'll tell you a little secret right now. God can do anything but fail and God has you covered and God still said to you and this is still his original plan. Be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful where you are. Multiply where you are. You use what you have where you are. You use what God has given you and you make the most of what God has given you and God will bless you. Don't don't look at what Sister Sue doing. Don't look at Mr. Tom doing. Don't look at what Brother 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 uh, Brother uh, Ishmael doing, or whatever the case may be. You focus on you. You you tap into your own gifts. Amen. You tap into your own gifts. Even as the Spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters and over the deep, and He said, "Let there be light. Let there be light." In the course of creation, God looked at the darkness. He looked at the darkness. He looked at the darkness in you. He looked at the darkness. He looked at the junk in you. He looked at when everybody writes you off. And he looked at the possibilities in you. God sees possibilities. God prophesied into your life possibilities. You've heard God talk to you in dreams. You've heard God talk to you in your mind and your spirit. And you know that sometimes you even don't even believe what God is saying because it sounds too fantastical. You think it's your mind making it up. Or you think God is lying to you or there's a spirit trying to trying to uh, boost you up for failure. No, God looks at the infinite possibilities that you are. And even when they write you off, God looks at the darkness. He looks at the uh, at the hurt, at the pain. He looks at the fact that they wrote you off. He looks at the fact that you wanted to lose some weight and can't even seem to lose this weight for years you've been trying. And he sees you as your original weight. Some of you, you wanted to go to college. You wanted to get an uh, education. Some of you wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer. Some of you wanted to start business. Some of you wanted to be married. Some of you wanted to get your marriage back. Some of you want to uh, get in that call that God has called you to. But because you've not gone into, into the level of prayer and fasting, it has not worked. Because God is calling you to look at everything and even the potential that is yours by divine right. Yes, there's a potential in you and in your heart and in your spirit he wants to pull out of you right now. He wants to pull everything that's rightfully yours. You are a king. You are a queen. You are a peculiar person. Don't let anybody tell you different. I don't care if you've been through high hell and hot water. I don't care if you've been through uh, more, uh, more, you more broken than the Ten Commandments. Do not let anybody come and speak into your character of a negative connotation. You hear me? Don't allow them to do that. If they start to do that, block them. Cut them off. Unfriend them. You hear me? If they try to sabotage you and mess you up, you cut them off. This is no time for people to be speaking death in your death of your life and de uh, uh, demeaning you, marginalizing you, and speaking negatively about you, and you still smiling and praying with them. Respectfully, you cut them off. You respectfully bow out. You respectfully unfriend them. And do not friend them again, because if you allow the snake to come back in your life, the snake will just shed its skin and the snake will grow bigger and more, more seductive and more tricky and more deceptive in the way he goes. So you got to what? Keep it moving. You keep it moving and you flow in the things that God has called you to flow in. Do not listen to the noise in the market because you are the crown of God's creation. Ah, let me say it again. I am saying you are the crown of God's creation. And today you will get unstuck. Today you will get unstuck. Today you will come out of backwardness. Today you will come out of stagnation. Today you will come out of limitation. Today you will understand that what you went through, even in the dreams, even in those dreams when those things are coming at you, even when those incubus are trying to sleep at you, even when those spiritual husbands and spiritual wives are attacking you and trying to enact covenants, even when ancient ancestors and even family members are actual projecting into your dream and coming at you, they are doing that because they see something in you that you don't even see yet. And this is what God is saying. God is saying, I'm calling you to greatness. 
when there's greatness upon you, they see the light on you. They see the glory upon your life. You don't even say you may begin mash up. As a point, as a point, as a point of fact is most of them have way more than you could ever have. But you have something that they don't have. You have the joy of the Lord. You have the presence of God. You have his happiness. You have his, you have his glow. You have his flow. You got the glow and they can see the glow. You might not even look like what you're going through because the Lord has kept you. You hear me? And the Lord has preserved you because they wanted to take you out. And if they had their own way, you know where you would have been. They tried to kill your potential. They tried to kill your joy. And as a matter of fact, the spirit of envy and the spirit of jealousy has attacked many of you. I'm looking in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing the spirit of envy and jealousy that has attacked many of you. And it is also the spirit of Cain. Just because your, your, your sacrifice and your offering was of a pure heart and you were giving it in the right way. And they took an occasion to be very, very, very envious. Very, very jealous of you. And they begin to what? Figured way to kill you. They've killed you physically, but they've killed your character. They've killed the anointing. They've killed the ministry. They've killed the dreaming. Some of you don't even see things in dreams no more like you used to. Some of you don't even hear the voice of the Lord. And the Lord revealed to me that there's a spirit going about right now stealing anointing. There's a spirit of, there's a spirit going about right now trying to get you to lose your connection with God. It's literally trying to whisper in your ear and telling you all kinds of foolishness about God and how you done mess up so bad and how you even in where you act no more and God done take his anointing away from you. This spirit is trying to get you to lose what God has already given you and God does not take away. God does not take away his giftings. You hear me? That's why some persons could be in a backslidden condition and still operating the giftings. That doesn't mean they are at that place. The gift will operate. But we're talking about a true repentance at the heart of God. We're talking about coming back to the image of your maker. When I say image, I'm talking about you being the reflection of God on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God gave his very best for you, which is Jesus Christ. God made his very best and put on this earth. You are God's very best. Man, you, your condition might not say it. That doesn't make you. Your family might not be telling you it. Your friends might not even say it. As a matter of fact, they may only see with their own limited five senses. But if they could see in the spirit who you are, if they could see the end of your book, if they could see where God has taken you, if they could see the innate potential that is going to rise up out of you, even some of you who suffered church hurt, some of you who suffered church hurt, some of you have been hurt so bad by men and women of God and people from church that you trusted and that you look up to and they've disappointed you so bad and they've turned you off and hurt you and because of that you've shut down your spirit. Some of you have been to such hurt in relationships that you just shut down in that area because you felt like I'm going from one relationship to the next and there's no change. It's always the same thing with a different face. God said he's changing that in the season because the whole of creation is waiting for you, for you to express your creativity, to bring your pleasure and your beauty and to be so busy doing the things of God that you don't have time for these naysayers. You don't have time for those people who say you work in miracles by Beelzebub. That's what people can say. Can you imagine that? They tell in the son of God that you work in miracles by Beelzebub, all right, by the prince of garbage. That's what they call him, the Lord of the dung. A lot of the flies, a lot of things that rot and stink. And they said, you were in league with Beelzebub. You were in league with Beelzebub. Huh? Then he said, who are your exes and your prophets are doing the same thing? All right? What are they doing it by? Huh? If I come to you and I heal this person by the finger of God, then what are, you, what are they doing it by? I come to you in truth and the kingdom of God is here and you missing it. You don't even know when your time of visitation is here because you're so carnal. You're so fleshy. You're so into uh, 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 pretense. And, and out of stature and the way you look at society. Who cares about that? You know, when I start myself up in church and falling down and I praise my God, I know why I do it because I've been brought from so far and the Lord has smiled upon me and given me favor. Hallelujah. When everybody else had written Peter Spencer off, when everybody had, had said there's no hope for Peter Spencer, when they was getting ready to call the, call the, the, the party wagon for me, they was getting ready to call Sandalus for me. They was telling people that Peter crazy. That Peter lost his mind. That Peter must have stole the church money. That Peter cursed. And these are people who I helped. People who I was generous to. People who I did really well for. And they turned on me like a rotten 
like like I did them something, like I had a, a plague on me or something. And that's what the enemy will do. The enemy will attack you from those that you that's supposed to be what your friends, huh? The people who the very ones who you're looking who you're looking for support, you gonna have to dig so deep sometimes. Because even David men, when they went out and the Malachites came and stole, alright? That's what they do. The Amalekites has been a thorn in the Lord's people's side from time memorial. And the Lord's like, wipe them out. All right? He stole the children and the women and all, all of the bombs and took them off when David and his men were out there doing battle and fighting. All right? They snuck in. Yeah, so that's what they do. Sneak in and took them off. And David men them cried from musty morning till evening. They cried till they couldn't cry more. And then after that, they just Decided, you know what, we're going to blame someone. Right? We're going to blame someone because, you know what, you're the one who caused us. If we didn't go into war with you, we would have lose, we would have lose our, our, our family. Huh? People are looking for someone to blame. Well, you stop blaming people. Look at yourself in the mirror. You go and look at your own self. You take responsibility for your own action. Stop blaming things. Stop, stop blaming people. And even sometimes the devil ain't do nothing to you. It's because of doors you open. It's because of certain things that you have have allowed to enter into your life and now you blame the devil for it he'll take the credit because that's what he is he he will take that credit he's an opportunist but if you look at your life and sit down and recognize that there's some things that you do and you're overspending you live in large and you're not taking you're not taking accountability and being a good steward of what god has given you you need to sit down <coughs> and schedule a time when you sit down and look at your life and begin to plan all right <coughs> yes have a plan and allow the lord to direct it and fill it and if you have to move around it, that's fine. But you figure out why people are always coming down on you. Why is it that you go through the same cycle? Why is it that you go through the same things? Is it the devil? Yes, the devil would take he will take authority and he will take that area, yes. But is it something else? Are you are you not flowing in the things of God like you should? Are you not at that place where you at? Or is there an attitude that you need to change? Is there an attitude of what? Of entitlement and a sense of what? Of, of of bitterness and resentment people can see that people can see that when you're bitter they can see when you're resentful and they can tell you too and people who watch it you will say you know what this person's bitter man they got a spirit of bitter even the way they preach it they preach it from bitterness it ain't righteous anger it's bitterness you preach it from bitterness or you speak it from bitterness or you speak it from a sense of entitlement all right you you are spoiled so some of us need to reconnect in that area and take responsibility and own it own it own what you did. Own that you messed up. Own that you missed it. Own that you spent God's tithe and you use God's tithe. Own it. Own it. Own it that you spoke. Own it that you that you, you you shouldn't have said what you said and, and gossip about that person and say what you said because it got back to them. Own it. And then apologize. And then reevaluate and reconfigure and recalibrate your life. And where God has taken you and begin to move forward with God. You hear me? It is a learning lesson. There are some things that you're going to learn in life that is going to happen through experience and failure. Failure will teach you more than you know from success. As a matter of fact, when you begin to fail at certain things, it shows that you are what? You are moving in God. The only failure is when you don't learn from it and you stop trying. See, you've got to learn from it. If it is a lesson you've learned from that failure, then it's not a failure, it's a loss. It is actually a blessing in disguise. How many times things that was a problem to us, it looked like a problem, it looked like a situation, but God was using it as a way to perfect us. God was using it as a way to, to gain our what? Our level of, of elevation. And through the brokenness, through the pain, through the suffering, we were able to see clearly into what God was doing to see that God used that pain, used that sickness, used that disease, used that hurt to open up your spirit, man, and to make you sit down and now begin to study the Word of God and to look at your life from a different perspective and to take stock. All right? Many times the biggest blessing that came was when God took away some of our toys, took away some things. Huh? So we could sit down and come to God and and learn how to what how to submit to his will and his way and to seek god at a higher level and a higher realm and to and to put away all of the all of the all the superfluity or all, all, all the all the surface stuff all the shallow things all the shallow things that we've been doing eh? all the shallow things and come up come up in god come up to a higher level 
come up to a high realm. And when God has taken you to a high realm, He makes you uncomfortable. He makes you uncomfortable in things you're doing because you now feel, I, as I call it, a divine dissatisfaction. You feel that there's something inside of you. You feel like there's a potential inside of you and you're not making it. You feel like there's glass ceilings. You feel like there's invisible walls. You feel like you're not appreciated. You feel like there's something you need to get to, but you don't know what it is. You feel that there's something keeping you back. You feel there's ropes, there's ties, but you can't see them. You can't feel them. You can't smell them, but you know they're there nonetheless. I'm telling you why. Because God said there's potential in you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to make you uncomfortable so you could launch out into the deep. You need to launch out into the deep. Because when you want to catch the fish, you need to go from the shallows into the deep. You need to go into the deep and you need to launch out and cast your nets. If you want the fruit, you got to go out on a limb. You need to go out on that limb. Go out on the limb so God could give you that fruit that you need. Amen. God said, uh, said in the season, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply because he's getting ready to show you that he is a God who wants you to dominate, who wants you to live in overflow. This is what I'm saying right now. I'm seeing you going into 2022. Some of you are going to tap, in, tap into another level of blessing and, and you're going to tap into another level of of the glory yes god is going to cause you to what to work into the overflow then when you get to the overflow it's going to start like a snowball have you ever seen a snowball it starts with about this big you know but it keeps rolling down rolling down by the time it comes down the mountain it it, it 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 is it is so big that it could quash a man because it picked up speed and a snowball and so you've got what I call the domino effect. Some of you are going to enter into a range and you're going to enter into dimension uh, and, and into the power of the glory. You're going to enter into a season of just intimacy with God and uh, the intimacy from spending time in God's presence will awaken in you a new desire and will show you things that you was trying to do for 30 years, for 40 years. And will show you ways and how to do it without you even having to struggle. God is trying to show you there's a better way. And that way is to come to God and sit down before the Lord and worship before Him and be silent in His presence and let the Lord speak. The thing about it is most of us talk, 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 talk all day and then we run out of God's presence. You never wait for what God is going to say. You never write down what He's going to say. And you never wait for what God is trying to tell you. How would you like it every day if someone you uh, uh, really, really cared about and love came to you every day and just talk, 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 talk and then say, okay, now, and when you try to talk, they run off and leave. That's disrespectful. That shows that shows care, uh, uh, carelessness, all right? So it is a give and take. Relationships are give and take. When you're excited about someone and you want to get to know them, you will speak, what? About them. You will talk about them. You'll feel, you'll feel connection. You'll want to know what they're doing. You will call them through the, the, uh, through the course of the day. You will think about them, and they'll be coming in your mind, and they'll be wonderful thoughts. So we got to what develop and cultivate a relationship where we talk about God, more of more of you, God, and less of me. Give me more of you, and take more of me. Let your presence inundate me. Give me more of you. Give me more of your presence. Give me more of your heart. Let me see it from your perspective. Let me see my sisters and brothers the way you see them. Let me look at it through your eyes, Lord. Let me see the wonderful creation that they are, even though I'm going to see it that way because I'm looking at it through my carnal. Give me a revelation of who this wonderful creation is. Let me give them their roles while they're living. Let me give them their celebration while they're living. Let me say something kind. Let me do something good for someone. Let me be a change in the world I want to see. God, help me to be the change in the world I want to see. Let the change start with me. If change must be, let it start with me. Let the potential to overcome and have victory and succeed come from me because you've created me to dominate. You've created me to have dominion and to be that man of God to live in the present challenge of challenging myself. I don't have the time to be fighting nobody. I don't have the time for no gossip. I don't have time for, 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 for coming uh, 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 against that one and this one. I don't hear no gossip. I don't want nobody talking about me, talking to me about nobody else. We ain't getting in no mix-up. That's not my plan. You're not going to throw me off course by your gossiping and by you telling this one and talking about that one. No, we don't do that. We don't get in personal personal grouts. All right? And if they come to us and ask us opinion, we'll say what we feel. But that's it. Our mind is to focus on the things of God. You hear me? 
and to get with God. Because all it does is take away from your time with God, get you and mix up, get you, get you out of the presence of God, get you in your carnal flesh, get you in all kinds of drama. And then what happens now? You lose the peace of God because see the peace of God is so easy to lose. When I say that I mean you could you could you could literally you could literally just start thinking some things and, and go to some places and bring up old hurts and bring up old pains and bring up old things. You know, even sometimes when we say we forgive a person, did we really forgive them? Did we really release them? How do you know? Because if you see them and you still want to walk on the side of the road, or you or you feel like smashing them in their head, or you feel like spitting in their face, or you wishing evil, even though you're smiling very nicely and say, hi, how are you doing? But in your heart of heart, you feeling all of the emotions of the pain and the thing they did to you, then you need to continue to release them and work on yourself, and you need to continue to submit the thing to the Lord. Huh? Because that's still an issue there. You got to do that to the point where you can walk up to them and say, Hey, bro, how you doing? Hey, sis, how you doing? Good to see you, man. And there's nothing there. Until you could do that, that means something's still there. If you can't sit with your brother in church, or if you sit down and he sit by you, you will move, or you look at them and you, 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 know, you see them get something new and you're angry at it or you're jealous of it, then there's an issue there. And you got to check that. The greatest battle ain't with the enemy. The greatest battle is with yourself. The greatest battle is from within. You got to deal with the inner man first. Let the mind of Christ be in you. Let Christ come forth in you, and then the Holy Spirit will crack you with certain things. And sometimes it almost feel good, and it almost feel nice because there are things in your heart that you don't even know that's there. You don't even know that there's things that is working in your heart that is being hidden from you. That's what the Bible says: the heart is deceitful above all things. And really wicked. Who could know it? God doesn't judge by the outer appearance or the external. He judges the internal and he judges the heart. He sees the heart. He sees exactly what's going on. That's why in this season we got to meditate on the Word of God because the Word of God is what? Transforming power. As the deer panted after the water, so my soul longed after thee. You got the hunger and thirst for the things of God. You got a hunger and thirst for the word of God. You got to get God so much in you till he just oozes out of you and you don't even know it. People can see it. All right? But it takes time. It takes time, all right? It takes time for you to stay in God's presence. It takes time for you to sit down. Let everything revolve around that time spent with God. Don't fit God into your schedule. Fit your schedule into God. Let everything revolve around God, all right? Make that your mainstay make that your center make that your altar raise up a godly altar of praise raise up a godly altar of worship raise up a godly altar of sacrifice by your seeking god and staying before him and getting his counsel and listening to him and obeying him because when you obey god and listen to him and do those hard things what you're doing is you're showing god that you're ready you're showing god that you're great you're showing god that you're a mighty man Allah. just like how the the angel came to Gideon and said, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. And Gideon say, what you talking about? Who is the mighty man? See, God speaking into your destiny and you still don't believe him. God telling you you're mighty and you still don't see what God sees. And he says, yes, you're a mighty man. Go in your strength and free the people of Israel from the Midianites and the Philistines' oppression. He said, me? I'm the least in my family and I'm in the threshing floor. Uh, uh, with the wine press, and I'm 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 dressing wheat in the wine press. All right, does that look like I'm a conqueror? You may not feel like you a conqueror. You may not feel like you're successful. You not you might feel like you're moving in the things of God because it doesn't feel that way. And if we go by feeling, you will never move forward because the Lord said to him, "You are a mighty man." God was speaking into his destiny. God was speaking into him through his angel. You are a mighty man, and he says, "Mighty." My circumstances might not change it. I don't look mighty. Ah, I'm not going to be mighty. And I hide from the Philist, uh, the, the Midianites. All right? I hide from them. And if I was so mighty, why am I, why am I in a wine press threshing wheat? All right? I'm hiding to, to, to get wheat and to thresh wheat and to save my food because they come and to destroy it. See, the Midianites will wait just until the crops are about the harvest and make them think that they can get this harvest and they'll destroy it. All right? And they'll come through with hordes. And they will take all away their weapons. They couldn't even have weapons. They took away all their weapons. So they had no weapons because uh, they taken it away from them. But that's when you turned away from God. They turned away from God. All right? And God punished them by allowing the Midianites to rule over them.
All right, and so what happened is after they cried out to the Lord for so long because of the bad treatment that the Midianites were doing, God raised up a deliverer. God is raising you up as a deliverer, but you might not feel like it. You might say, listen, I don't feel like it because look at my circumstances. I ain't got this money. I ain't got this thing. I ain't got this, I ain't got this, I ain't got that, I ain't got this, this ain't happening for me. I, you know, I, 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 as a matter of fact, I find a lot of my prayers ain't get answered. I still have these terrible dreams. This still happening to me. I'm still being fought. They still say this, but me, I still see these things come around me. I'm still being blocked. And my finances still ain't where that. But the Lord said, you are a mighty conqueror. Because he's speaking to the potential. He's looking to the dark. He's looking into to the hidden thing from the womb and he's seeing you not as you are but where you will be in years to come that's why a prophecy was really a prophecy will look like a lie because it'll, it'll seem like the man lying to you it'll seem like the prophet who's speaking lying it'll seem like god lied to you why would you try to boost me up why would you try to big me up for me to go get, get killed all right uh, for me to be destroyed huh? and and so you operate from the perspective of fear all right fear is false evidence of pain real all right hallelujah but god said go in your might and god said i'll give you a sign and i'll give you another fleece you see we ask god for a sign god said that's your husband god said that man is your husband god said that's your husband god said that's your wife but did he tell you go and approach them did he tell you go and say anything to them? no he didn't tell you that you prepare yourself you work on yourself you work on you you focus on you you God already told you that I give you this business. God said, I can give you that. God said, I'm going to build you up. God said, I'm going to take you to the world. God said, the world will know your name. God said, I'm going to take you global. And yet you look at God and you say, well, God, the man ain't acting right. The woman ain't acting right. I went and talked to them and they acting anything but the way it seemed like. Your prophecy will not act the way it is when you get a word from God. Your prophecy ain't going to act like the way it look. As a matter of fact, it act even worse. And so it'll make you wonder if it is really God that spoke the word to you or if it is a false prophecy or false word. Because I've had many people come to me and said, Man of God, that thing that you say seems far off. It ain't look like it's coming to pass. And I said, Lord, did, did, did they prophesy right to these people or did they see right? And then I have to check God because I got to make sure. You know, I got to check myself. All right. And God would have to what? Uh, I'll go for it and, and, and say, Yes, it was the right word, but it's time and chance. And they need to get some things together and they need to live right. Most times, 10 out of 10 times, Nine out of ten times, most of them come back and say, Man of God, the thing come to pass. And it came to pass. I didn't even recognize it came to pass. It had already come to pass. All right? But God wants you to what? It's to encourage you. When a prophetic word is spoken in your life, why is it spoken in your life? God might even know the thing you're doing in secret. God might even see the thing you're doing. And you might even be living right. You better even be working, living right. People come to me and say, Why you prophesy to the man? Hey, I know what he's doing. I mean, I have people come to me and tell me, You shouldn't prophesy to them. Don't prophesy to them because you prophesy to them and God ain't going to bless them and God ain't going to... Listen, you catch more honey with, with, with... You catch more bees with honey than with vinegar. God speaks to your potential even though this, even knowing the thing you're doing. God sees what you're doing but see his goodness will compel you. His goodness will compel you. And his goodness will cause you to turn around. How many times when you know you wasn't living right for God and God still gave you a wonderful word and God still told you, and yeah, he corrected you and yeah, he said some things, but the word was to challenge you and to bring you up. And you said, you know, my God, look at God. God love me so much. I don't even love myself like that. As a matter of fact, I did so much wrong things and God still loved me and God still is being great to me and God still supply my needs and God still doing this. And I know I don't deserve it. What man of love this is. And so when God does that through his servants, speaking into the life, it ain't always God, it ain't always a bad prophecy. It I always i know what they're doing i know they're up to we ain't god you don't know everything you don't know everything what god is doing in their life you don't see everything who is you look at your own life you check your own life and stop getting people business check your life first stop getting god's business stop trying to control i've had people come to me on so many occasions and why you say that to them and you say that to them ah, ah, ah. see that's uh, you you making people look bad you make it look people bad you make it you just want you want to pick them up and say that well do you know that god did you know that they were praying to God for change and they were asking God to help them and this was God's way of reaching them? Did you look at their heart? Can you read their heart? Can you see what's deep on the inside? Huh? You don't know. You don't know your own heart. Then there's pride and arrogance sometimes operating and you speak on a turn. Stop getting God's business. Check your life. Check your life. You go, you go to God and stop getting people's business. Take the moat out of your own eye first. Let God deal with God's business. That's why people can't even move forward, you know. They always get in God's business. They get in God's business. All right? 
mind your own business mind your own business work on you you work on you stop feeling like everybody else against you stop looking at that as everybody trying to do something to you stop gossiping stop slandering stop talking about people stop doing that stop spreading and creating problems and division that spirit is so real and a lot of us need to come to the realization that god you know what i've been partaking in this thing and this spirit is alive and well it's the sabotage again but i want to tell you something very interesting God sees everything you're doing. God sees the good, the bad. He knows even your heart. He knows even when you have the plastic smile on and you have, you have hate or you don't even want to be with this person. God sees that. And he knows that even when you ain't being real with him. So guess what? You work on you. Get your life together. You get your heart together. And you, you pray for that person. Yes, they might have done some things. They might have said some things. And you still pray for them. You pray for them. You pray for yourself, man. You. I didn't tell you to be friends with them. If you feel like they're doing you so much wrong, unfriend them. Block them. All right? That's it. It's very simple. All right? Just block them, unfriend them. Let them have a time where they could think about it. All right? And let them have a reflection time. But you keep moving on. Don't let them see what you're doing. Don't let them know where you're going. That's as simple as it is. All right? But to talk about it and to talk about it and to talk about it and to bring that up shows a level of, of hurt and pain that needs to be healed all right it needs to be healed because listen people sleeping they ain't wondering what, what you they wonder what you think about they sleeping good they sleeping so good and you still in that bitterness in that simple that that, that that animosity and that that thing that bitterness it's eating you many people have sickness and they don't recognize that 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 the bitterness of gall brings what bone issues problems with bones problems with with you know eyes and ears why because there's the sickness from being bitter being having animosity having bile having this having that and it is blocking and it is it is inhibiting you from also moving in the spirit it's an emotional blockage but it's coming from a spiritual perspective these spirits will block you and they will make you mean miserable and angry and you'll think that you've been you think that you've been discerning but all you're being is cynical critical and judgmental that's all it is. You're not discerning anymore. You left off from that. Now you come into the place where you are just being just being cynical. All right? And you're judging everybody and you're becoming hyper vigilant. And so you're blowing everything out of proportion. Listen, guys. Listen. Let me make it real simple for you. When God is about to bless you, no man can stop it. People will criticize you. They'll tell you you're doing this. They'll tell you you're doing that. But if they know the hell you went through, do you know the hell that certain people endured? And you angry with them and you can't separate them? And you can't say something nice about them then if you can't say something nice then shut up don't say anything all right that's what they taught us because god is trying to work on us work on our heart work on our mind and you wonder why some people are still stuck they because they wouldn't let things go i had this lady she said she said she said man of god i need you to pray for this man that god will kill him i said listen i don't work like that i said i don't work like that woman of god uh -uh. yeah well you know he put me through he, he messed me up. He, he, he destroyed all my relationship. Every relationship I go in, it only lasts about three months, and a man then turned on me. And he told me he did it to me. And he told me he did it to himself. I said, Well, listen, I want you to forgive him and release him. She said, Forgive and release? Forgive and release? For all he did to me? All he stole from me? Who messed my life up? Ah, 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 ah. You guys should keep your prayer then. Keep your prayer. Keep your prayer. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that. And the person walked out of my, walked out of my presence. <laughs> I tell you, I know psychic, and I don't work like that. You're dealing with a real man of God here. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be used as a, as a yo-yo or psychic or, or someone to just say things like, no, 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 no. See, they could take the good prophecy, but when I speak to them and correct them, they don't stay. Stop speaking to me. I see this lady. I, I give her a prophecy. They, I give her some correction and warning. That woman stopped speaking to me. She don't speak to me. <laughs> she see me and keep going. And wouldn't say hi, wouldn't say nothing. Why? Because she had a spirit of control and she wanted to control me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When the nice prophets come in. Oh, yeah. Prophet, you. Ah, listen, man. Listen. Prophet, you. Oh, God. You just so anointed. You know, you just see so much. Oh, Jesus. Ooh. Ooh. I got to see it for you next week. <laughs> but when I correct them and say, this is that, I don't know about him. That prophet, he, he look like he off. He, he, ah, mm, 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 mm. I, I don't even mess with him no more. There's something wrong with him. He's a marine prophet. Him? Mm -mm -mm. He always has a tree by saying, well, something wrong. But but before then, when I tell you the good stuff, the good things, 
the wonderful things. And you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. God. Oh, this is anointing. Yeah, I just feel glory. But you've got to take the bitter with the sweet. You've got to also be corrected. And and I'm one. I like to get along with everybody. You know, and I, 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 I really try to, to, you know, just be tactful when I'm saying things. And so when I do give you a correction, I try to do it in love. And I try to call you on the side and talk to you and then... In a, in, you know, in a, in a way that, you know, hey, listen, you'll get it. You'll know what I mean. But it's, it's the cause correct you. But some people, they have such bitterness in their heart that everything that you say to them is what? Is a direct attack against them. You have something against me. I know you don't like me. I know you're mean. He's always mean. You always have to listen against me. Right? And that's what the enemy has done to a lot of people. And that is not the potential of God flowing. The potential of God flowing in your life is for you to examine your life. And then God wants to set you free. First, get yourself free. When you're in a plane and there's a turbulence, don't go trying to set nobody else free or help them first before you what? You put on your own oxygen mask. You put on your own oxygen mask. You put on your own life vest. You get yourself sorted first and then you go help the others because you won't be able to help anybody else if you don't help yourself. Some of you don't even love yourself the way you're supposed to love yourself. you all about loving others. But you need to love up on you. And then you say, everybody take advantage of you. Everybody use you. They always kick you to the curb. They always bully you. This always tends, uh, uh, this, this thing always happens the same way. Then you begin to look at why they're using you like that. Why they're doing it. What is in you that is addiction, addiction approval seeking? What is it in you that says, abuse me? What is it in you that says, abuse me? Abuse me, abuse me, use me. There's something in you where there's low self-esteem, low self-worth, or you have an unconscious death wish. Some people are unconsciously drawn to that because they want to play the victim. The victim mindset has to be dealt with. You are not a victim. God has told you you're not a victim, and you've seen the demonstration of God's power. God says you are a victim, but many people play the victim card because it gives them control, because it gets people to bend to their will. Some people will play sick, so they could get you to what cater to them. They play weak, and in fact, they're stronger than you and everybody else. So you could what you could be there all the time using your strength while they while they cruising on you, all right? And they'll boost you up and tell you you're so strong and you're so anointed. But they're using the anointing because they want control. It's a control mechanism while they dump on you and while they while they pour out all their stuff on you and never change. See, there are people who know how to reverse tactics on you and how to shift on you and change on you, but not in a good way. See, this is this is why I call people pleasing. All right. Now, this is what I'm saying. You are the victor. You are the winner. You are the champion. You are a champion. But you see, with great power comes great responsibility. You got to take responsibility for your action. Every day you wake up, you must you must forcefully and you must intentionally make up your mind to walk with God hand in hand. All right. And to do the hard thing first. Sometimes it's not easy, but when you begin to do the hard thing first, you will notice that it gets easier and easier. If you plan to walk a mile a day, start walking a mile a day. If you plan to stop eating junk food, then just incorporate the apple, then incorporate this. Start to throw, uh, get rid of sodas or get rid of juice or cut it down to half. It might not be easy to, to get rid of it all the time, but maybe drink every drink one every other day till you can stop it completely or give or get a substitute you know, with water and a lemonade. How are you doing? Begin to waiting process so you can begin to see work. You know, don't just keep eating cheese doodle and a bunch of Kentucky and a bunch of junk food and saying, you know, God, I wonder why I go through all this problem. I wonder why my heart feels like this and I can't move and I got stiff joints. It's because your lifestyle needs to change to, to reflect the action that you're talking about. See, action, action without, without uh, faith without action is really just wishful thinking. It is pipe dreaming and it is a fool's errand. You got to apply action to your fate, all right? I can't do your push-ups for you. You can't do my push-ups for me. Who could benefit if I ask you to do 10, 20 push-ups for me? You can get the muscles, you can get the endurance, you can get the strength, you can get the body, you can get the, uh, 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 you know, all the benefits, the health benefits of doing those push-ups, doing those sit-ups, doing those crunches, whatever it is, all right? I have to do my own so I can what? I can benefit from my own self. But the thing about it is everybody wants you to do the push-ups for them and do their, all their work for them. They don't want to do nothing. They want you to do all the work. All right? So the root word for Adam is mankind. Mankind. Adam. Adam. He said, Adam, you go and till this garden <laughs> and you go and you work. 
See, work, work. You will eat by the sweat of your brow. Some people don't even want to work. Some people work for three, four months and that's it. They find fault and they leave the job again. And they wonder why. Because they don't want to consistently be disciplined to get up and to put aside certain things and be on that man job and that woman job at the time they're supposed to be and be a good steward, right? And to be that example they're supposed to be. So what it is that we're saying right here, guys, is that with over seven to nine billion people in this, in this, uh, on the face of the earth, God shows you to be here at this particular time and season because He knew that you were able to handle it. All right, He knew that you were able to be here and handle it because God has a plan for you and He knows your capability. God knows your capability and He says He will not put nothing more on you than you can bear. You might feel that you can't do 10 push ups, but you could do one, right? Then do another one the next day. Then try one after the one. Then you might say, I can't do 100, but I can do one. Then I can do one. Then go for another one. Try another one. Before you know it, you're up to 20 or 30 push-ups, or whatever the case may be. However it is, because you don't have to think about the whole thing. The journey to a thousand miles begins with the first step. But the seed of the potential is right inside of you. It must break forth. And it comes forth from what? From trials and tribulations. And sometimes it comes from it comes from frustration. And, and it also comes from going through a situation that is uncomfortable. Because when you're growing, it's uncomfortable. There's something called growing pains. You guys are going to get unstuck today. All right? But you've got to be rooted in God. Because when the seed begins to split open, first the blade, then the air, then the corn. As long as the earth remains, there will be seed, time, and harvest. Seed, that's what you plant in the ground. Time is what you go through. Then harvest is what you reap at the end of that of that, uh, of that, that the journey from the time. All right? But you've got to plant it. Then you got to what? Work it. Then you got to see it. I see after it. Then you got to take care of it. All right? Then you always get back more. You plant one seed and you get a harvest. You know hear I me? Mean? You plant multiple seeds and you get multiple harvests. All right? Because that's the process of multiplication. God has multiplied you. There's many of you that has the spirit of multiplication in you that God knew based on your what? Based on your call and based on what he's called you to do, the potential has been invested in you. God invested His all his glory, all his life, and he created you to use the latent authority and ability that is in you. It must awaken. The sleeper must awaken. That's what God is doing. He's awakening you, these things. He's awakening in you the dormant sleeping potential that he put in you from the creation. All right? He put that in you from the dawn of creation. And then you're not supposed to be wasted amongst, you know, amongst your kindred. Why are you wasting? Why are some people just sitting down under the tree all day playing domino, smoking grass, where these guys are what a potential NBA players? Some of them just as good as LeBron. Yes, there's some people who could outshoot Stephen Curry right here in the Bahamas. There's some guys who, if you see them in their day, I mean, they were so good. But yet they home doing nothing. You know, some of them turn out to be just like, you know, I mean, from all of the glorious height, they just come here and just waste their life away. And guess what? They had a chance. But what happened is they didn't believe in themselves, guys. They didn't believe that God could do it. And you know what happened? They figured out a way to sabotage themselves because they didn't have the mental, the mental conditioning and the mental training. And they didn't have the mind of Christ. So they figured a way how to sabotage and to mess their life up. Yes, the enemy had to because you had to open the door. The Bible says that Jesus, uh, uh, the Lord... The Lord God Almighty told Cain, sin is crouching at your door. But you must learn to master it. Sin is crouching at the door. In other words, it's looking for a way in. Sin means Satan. He's trying to crouch, all right, looking to get in. But you must master it. Master yourself. Master you. Because the Bible says, Christ told his disciples, Satan is coming. The wicked one is coming, but he has nothing in me. And in other words, I've so mastered myself. I've so submitted myself to the will of the Father that he can't even blame nothing on me. Everything is falsified. Everything is a blind sham. But he ain't doing nothing. I do this myself. He can't take my life. I lay down my life. I do this. Huh? When the three men was in the fire, what'd they do? They said, we ain't gonna bend. We ain't gonna bow. All right? And we ain't gonna break. They said, even though you said, bow down and worship these gods. That's what they try to do now. They try to get you to bow down. And worship the God when the music starts to play. And then and the corners and the timbrels and all that. You must bow to this God. This God made out of metal and stone and, and, and carving. This false God. And, and, and when you do that, oh, there's pain of death. Huh? The whole nation bowed. But there's three boys, Hebrew boys, that didn't bow. And because of that, the fire was turned up seven times hotter. They said, listen, O King, we cannot answer you in this matter. 
All right, we don't care. We even get out to you in this. But if we die, we perish. All right, but we ain't bowing down to no false god because we know who we serve, and we're gonna allow our God to fight this battle for us. And so He said, "Yeah, yeah, all right, make it seven times harder." And they threw them in there. All right, and then when He looked in the flame in the oven, He said, "I see one as the sons of the God." He looked at the sons of the God. And we throw three men in there. How's it four men in there now? Because they saw Christ in there. It was Christ in there with them. And there was no smoke. There was no singe. There was no burn. There was not even a hair on the head of singe. And when they came out, he said, truly the God of Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego is the God of all gods. And he has all power. If I catch anybody not bowing down to that God, they're in trouble. See, when you stand up for God, God will stand up for you. And it took men of character Men that will say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. And even if they try to punish me, and if they try to bring unjust laws against me, I know the laws that's written in my heart. I know the laws of the book of, of, of the Lord and the Bible. And it is it is real to me. And so bef be before I bow to these false phony gods, I prefer you to throw me in the furnace because you want to punish me. You want to you make an example of me. But you can see who is God and who is really the false God. And guess what? He said, let everyone know that God, the God of Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, this is the God that will be a national God. This God where everybody can serve. He is now the God everybody bow to. See, when you stand up for God, God will stand up for you. Because God has placed within you potential, potential, potential to reach a certain level and to accomplish the goal. The worst thing that a person can do is die before he accomplish his goal. When we hear about untimely death, death by uh, uh, misadventure, so to speak, dead by uh, you know freakish things that nobody understand, and does something to us because you look at the bright shining star that person had in their life, and yet someone truly took their life, or they were in the wrong place at the wrong time, and this is what is happening: the spirit of death, untimely death, death by uh, 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 freakish accidents, and death tables, death timetables, and death charts, and death alignments. In this season, is trying to take people out. Because it has a, what a, a fair component to it, but you are what you are a daughter and a son of the Most High God. There shall be no fear that will rule over you. Fear will not lord itself over you, and fear will not cause you to operate from that perspective. That, that's what you set to what you're watching. Every day, someone is coming up with something else. I, I I have the opinion that right now I just keep my focus. I don't even I don't even too much be like surfing at like that. Why? Because too much people coming up with stuff, and I need to keep my mind focused on God. All right. Why do you think God had to call Abraham out? God called Abraham out from among his kin. He called him out from among his kin. You got to come out from among some people. Why did he call him out? Because they were idol worshiping people. Those Babylonians, Sumerians, all right, and Akkadians, they were they were deep in the idol worship. They were deep in the I mean the, I mean people who made gods were like, like multi billionaires back there. If they were in the trade of making gods and carving gods and uh, woodworking and and, and, and metalworking and, and blacksmithing. They were, they were superstars because they made these gods with their own hand who they go and pray to and worship. And, you know, Abraham was probably frustrated. He'd see, look at these things and say, well, I feel like these, these, these are our own gods. Huh? And he heard this invisible God. He told us, he, he might have told his parents about that. They're like, what are you talking about? You can't see this God? And then he tell you, move from here to a far country you don't know? What are you talking about? This invisible God? We can see all our gods. We can see them. They look at them, look at them. He right on the wall. We carve him. Huh? That's your God right there. Oh, yeah. Is the idol right there? That's the idol. That's the God right there. Go pray to the idol. He nothing, nothing. Tired, frustrated. I don't know what it is, but I just I don't want to pray to these idols anymore. No and you now talking about you have an invisible God, and he tells you leave the country. You sure you here, right? <laughs> leave this country. Why did God have to tell him leave the country? God could have blessed him there, but he couldn't. He wouldn't maintain it because the mindset of the cultural conditioning. Would have had him blocked. He had to tell him, get away from your country and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you because the mindset and the negativity and the down and the and the, and, and the low low thinking, low level thinking, stinking thinking would have had him bound right up. The Lord had to allow him to go through all kinds of countries and land to condition him to get that mind that mindset and mentality out of him and then on top of that once he got it out he says now listen 
I can make you I can make you a father of 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 many nations. You can be a great man. And yet man ain't have no child. Alright? Whatever service could be, uh he inherit all his money and all his wealth. And his wife was barren. Alright? But God tell him, I can make you a great nation and you will have progeny as 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 sun as the stars and as the sand on the seashore. This is gonna be your inheritance and the whole world will be blessed through your seed. And yet, how did it look? I can't have no children because my wife is barren. We both up in age. And on top of that, he now changed my name to, t to call me, tell me call myself father of many nations. And for my wife to call herself princess. All right. Mother of, of, of many nations. Huh? Princess. Father of many nations. What is that? So you can imagine. They calling themselves princess and father of many nations. And everybody snickering and laughing behind their back because they know they know that they barren. They know that they can't have no children. They're childless and they're up in age. And they laughing at them behind their back. But God tell them, call it. Why was he telling them, call it? Why was he speaking into the destiny? Because sometimes for you to elevate to your highest potential, God has to change your circumstances by changing your name. He changes your name because he changes your destiny. That's why when you call people rat, you know, I know this guy, he was named rat. He started to look like a rat. All right? And he accepted it. When they call him rat, he said, yeah, 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 man. Yeah, rat. Hey, rat. Rat. Yeah, yeah. What you saying, rat? Yeah, but yeah, but Eric Kulo. What happened is he now began to take on the characteristics and he began to act like that rat. They call this guy, they call this guy counterfeit. Right? And he began to answer, no, my name is not counterfeit. My name is so and so and so. And you don't call me counterfeit. You don't call me fish. You don't call me hog head. You don't call me horse head. Right? You don't call me teeth. You don't call me Smurf. You don't call me Gargabel. You don't call me Scum. Right? You imagine that people giving you these names and you actually answering it. And the person, ten out of, 9 out of 10 times, they begin to act just like the name they were given. I'm talking about even their nicknames, those pet names. You will see them even start to look like it, to sound like it, and their modus operandi is almost similar. Don't let nobody try to change your name. Don't let nobody rename you. Don't let nobody try to name you when i was young and i was small all right my ears were extremely big because you know i was you know just had big ears my ears was like this and they used to call me dumbo i didn't like that and i used to tell them, my name is not dumbo bro my name is peter and they was like but you can't take a joke you know you look at your big ears right they used to call me mad have you guys ever seen mad comic the mad comic with the face with you know the mad comic book and they used to tell me i look like mad i, I said no i don't look i'm mad i'm not mad I, i'm peter spencer and i'm peter don't call me no man and don't, 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 don't give me that name, all right? Now, I didn't mind them so much with the smiley. You know, they try to call me the smiley thing, you know? And I really stick, but, you know, I didn't mind that so much, you know? But people will try to give you a name that is negative, all right? It's, it has no connotation towards your destiny. And so you got to be careful with people speaking, whether they're naming you or speaking negatively against your circumstances and about your goals and dreams that you know that's uniquely been given to you because everybody wants to see and celebrate you and let me tell you something as family members i'm i'm sorry to say but a lot of times it's those ones closest to you not always they got some people we're not talking we're not trying to create division some people who will celebrate you and love you and be happy for you but from my experience and from counseling thousands of people we've seen that most times it is the one that's closest to them that has been perpetrating the fraud that's been doing the thing to them so sometimes you got to what let God direct you and still speak what you got to speak and say what you are. Yes, when they tell you you're a freak and you you a failure, no, sir, God don't make no jump. And I'm a king. You broke it to tell about no, sir, sir. No, sir, I may, I may not have the money right now, but the money is coming. I'm not always going to be in this position. You see, poverty is, not a, poverty is not a state, you know. It's a mindset, all right? It is not a permanent condition. It's a mindset. Why do you think people are so poor in, in those countries? Because they have a mindset like that. Because that's what passed down. And because of broken certain laws and falling after certain gods that have a poverty spirit attached to them. And then you've disobeyed God's laws. And so you've opened yourself up to that. But by, by and large, it is a mindset. You've got to change your mind. 
change your mind, change the way you think, change the way you see things, begin to agree with God. God calls you a champion. God calls you a mighty man of God. God calls you a Ruth. God calls you a Esther. Then you receive that in the realm of the spirit. So what happened to us, sometimes we have such low self-esteem, we can't even take a compliment. And God is saying, first of all, I got to get all this junk at you before I can even bless you. I want to bless you, but every time I try to bless you, the junk that is in you is acting as a barrier because there's so much things that are underlying that you could never tap into because you sabotage even your marriage. You sabotage even the wedding. You say some things and did some things because it was even unconscious. And you pushed the man or woman away. Yes, you pushed him away by certain things you did or you continue to do because you felt somewhere in your heart they would soon leave you or they can go anyhow or you felt like hey listen this is just the way it is this i've been brought up this is what i this is what we always do and that's how it is you didn't want to change you didn't want to compromise you didn't want to work you didn't want to come in the middle and so what happened is eventually eventually the enemy got it now all right and the enemy is attacking godly marriages to be to be honest with you the enemy is against godly marriages so god called him out and said i'm going to give you a son no, not the Ishmael that you had by Hagar, but I'm going to give you a son from your wife, Sarah. And this child will be called Laughter. And then when God was sitting down, when he came down in human form, and he's sitting down with his two angels talking to him, Sarah was in the other tent, and she laughed. And, and, and the Lord said, why do you laugh? She said, I laugh. He said, yes, you laugh. She said, no, I laugh. The Lord said, yes, you laugh. And because you laugh, we will call your son Laughter. And this time, according to according to life, you will be visited with a child. So she said, "Will I give my Lord pleasure again? See that our bodies are old." But guess what? When the time come, oh yeah, everything was working, and it was working very good because by that time they they've been calling themselves Sarah, Princess Sarah, Princess, and Abraham, uh, Father of many nations, because they've been speaking their destiny, speak your destiny. Speak that you're king. Speak that you're queen. Speak that your business is prospering. Speak that your business is blessed. Speak that you have the best tasting food. You have the best tasting uh, 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 orders or whatever the case may be. Speak that you uh, now uh, seeing your husband come, your your mate come. Yes, you have to go and actually uh, uh, stimulate the blessings. All right, do something that's crazy. All right, you know, go out there and buy their shirt for them. What do you think they like? All right, cut out a picture. What do you think they might look like? <laughs> Put down the qualities you want in your husband. And then you make sure that you also exhibit those qualities yourself. Don't tell God you want all those qualities, but you ain't changing yourself. You need to change yourself too and work on you so God can bring it to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you guys enjoying this? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look let's look at let's look at let's look at someone who 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 got it a really literally see their potential. When Rebecca was pregnant, she was really sick and stuff was going on. God had to tell her and tell them to listen, you have two nations in you. Alright, there's two nations in you. God could see. God said there's two nations in you. Alright? And the younger, the younger will what? Subdue the, the older. There's two nations in you. I mean, two people. And then one of them came out and he's, he, he what? He was holding on. Because the, 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 the older will serve the younger. And when he came out, he was holding on to his brother's leg. He wanted to, he wanted to take his brother's position. Alright? And so they call him eel catcher. They call him supplanter. They call him fox. So he grew up hearing, boy, you use a, use a fox, use a supplanter, use an eel catcher, you sly, you crooked. You imagine them calling you that all your life. You begin to act like that. You begin to act like you that because that's what they've been saying to you all your life. The best of the change his name. The best of the change his name and change his outcome by asking God to bless him and change him different. All right? But imagine them calling him 
Boy, you know, you use an eel catcher, you use a supplanter, you know, you're tricky, you use a trickster, you use an old fox. So he became very cunning and sneaky, all right? Because his name was reflecting that, all right? And so through the process of time, his brother was coming to kill him. So he had to, what, he had to split people up, see? He had to split them up, say, just in case he attacked me, then they'll get away. He still was calculating. He still was using his own mind concept. He still was trying to figure out his own flesh. And so that night, he began to have a dream. And in that dream, he was he began to wrestle with this man. And in, in turn out, he was wrestling. He was actually wrestling with the Lord. All right? And they wrestled all night. And he said, I, not, I will not let you go until you bless me. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And God, and guess what God said? God said, what is your name? God knows his name. Because if he wanted to change him, he had to change his name. Because they've been calling him eel catcher, supplanter, uh, uh, you know, sly fox and and and, and uh, 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 you know, uh, trick trickster. So the Lord said, "What is your name?" And he said, "He said, he said, my name is Jacob." He said, "No, you are now prince among men because you've stripped with God, and one. Therefore, your name should be called Israel." All right, Israel. We change his name, change his destiny, change the name, change the thinking, change the mindset. Change the record that's playing in your head. Change the wicked thoughts that have been going through. Change the stinking thinking. Change the stock limiting, uh, li uh, the stock limitations of thoughts. See, some of these thoughts are, are so programmed and ingrained that we need to constantly do a upheaval and a tone up. And sometimes we need renovation and total breakdown and reconditioning because some of us have taken such a beating in our self esteem. Have taken such a beating in, 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 in you know the things that happen in life. Life can handle some. Can handle some serious blows, all right, and some things we go through because we were stubborn and hard headed. We make it even more, uh, more hard, all right. Let's let's look, let's, 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 let's look at this. The children of Israel were supposed to have a 40 day journey to them in the promised land, it took them 40 years. Why? Because they gave an evil report and they were stubborn and stiff necked. In other words, they were constantly complaining, constantly murmuring, and so God had to what cause them to die out because He couldn't take them in there because they would poison the whole bat. So He allowed them to walk around and walk around and walk around in a circle. They walk around and around, all right, never finding their way until all of that generation from Joshua and Caleb had died out. The only thing was Joshua and Caleb because they brought a good report. See, you've got to bring a good report. Whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. Whatever thing is excellent, whatever thing is praiseworthy, whatever thing is of, of, of good report, think on these things. Don't let the enemy give you his mindset. Don't let the enemy change your thinking. Don't let the enemy uh, program you for failure through, through TV, through media, through social conditioning, through these things they are bringing upon the face of the earth. Make sure that the Word of God is a priority in your life. And make sure that God's word is saturating your mind and that you are getting in a place of prayer combined with fasting, combined with thinking from a perspective of heaven, all right? Because the Bible says we're seated in heavenly places. We are seated in the third heavens. And so the enemy plants suggestions from what? The second heaven. And he fights us through principalities, through powers, through spiritual wickedness, high places, and rulers of the darkness. These guys patrol the aeons or the atmosphere, all right? And they bring down these thoughts from that perspective and they broadcast it like frequency in waves, okay? It comes in waves, radio waves, frequency. And whatever you tune into, whatever your mind tunes into, it'll pick up. And so he tries to get you to tune into all the noise and to all the market talk and all the other things. And so God, when he wants to speak to you, he has to put you to sleep because you have so much stuff going in your mind that he can't even talk to you the way he want to talk to you. So he'll put you to sleep and show you a dream. So this is what I'm saying to you guys. God had to change what? Jacob's name. Hallelujah. And guess what? He fulfilled the promises of God and the whole of the children of Israel is being blessed and we are now grafted in because we've been we've been brought in by Messiah. We've been brought in by Messiah. You hear me? Even Rahab, the prostitute, she was a prostitute. She had a bad name. All right? She was a prostitute, but she helped the spies, and she made them promise that, you know, I've helped you guys. Here's the red cloth. There's hang the red cloth in here. That's what the covenant they gave her. And you swear to me that you can be kind to my family and me, and she helped them to win. All right? And then they did. They did win. Guess what? Guess what? She was the great-grandmother of David. Who came to the line of David? Who was called the son of David? God gave her the honor. A prostitute. That he wasn't even a wasn't even a, uh, Israelite, all right? Because of what she did, 
the honor came through her line. You hear me? That the Messiah was birthed through that same what that woman did. You hear me? What that woman did by 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 taking the spies in. All right. Let me tell you something. You are not too far from God for God to use you. You're not too far from God for God to turn your life around. You're not too far from God. I don't care what they say. I don't care. Look, God can still turn your life around. God can still use you. All He wants is your availability. All He wants is your ability to to be there for Him. All right, and to listen, to counsel, and 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 allow Him to use you. Look what He did. Look what He did. He went to tax collectors and prostitutes. They said, Jesus, you hang out with prostitutes and tax collectors. You know, you 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 hang out with wives. You know, you hang out with the with you know the dregs of society. Society, you hang out with the dregs. Because guess what? Those that are well don't need a physician. I come to those who are sick. You are well, keep going, keep moving. But those who are sick, those who need me, that's who I come to. So those who are well don't need a physician. All right? You, you obviously you good. You good where you at. So keep on moving, keep it moving. But I come for those that are hungry for me. I come to those that thirsting after me. I come for them that are looking for me, that I have an expectation. I looking for them that just ooh, listen. I I can't wait to get in God's presence, walk with Him, talk with Him. And let God minister to me. All right. Let me tell you something, guys. This is not going to be easy. Yes, there is a crushing. There is a breaking. There is a making. All right. But there's also there's also the victory, and there's also the passing of the test. All right. When those guys are becoming Navy SEALs, every day they say quit. They say quit. Every day you want to quit, just ring the bell. You want to quit, ring the bell. We make it super hard for you. Because your team made life will depend upon you not quitting. All right. This is where we have to find the long haul and dig deep within ourselves to pull up out those things. When you even hear from God, when you feel that like God is against you, when you feel that like God is mad with you, you ain't hear from God in a long time, and you wonder what's going on, and you ain't seen nothing, and it feels like everything turning against you, and you know that God has tested you or trying you, and yet you feel like I don't know if I've God even God even with me anymore. That's when you gotta dig deep and you gotta look at God. And where he brought you from, and you gotta look at the old prophecies. You gotta look at the old words. That's why I say write your prophecy down, and also record it if you can, and play them back in your mind for when lean times come, for when God is testing you, for when the enemy is bombarding you, so you will be able to recognize that you have a portion with God, and God will not destroy your destiny, but God will cause you to operate in the things of God, and He will give you strength like you've never seen before. All right. He will give you strength. He'll give you wisdom. He'll give you power. He will he will energize you. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't throw in the towel. But you have to recognize this is not a sprint, guys. This is not a sprint. This is a long distance marathon. All right. See, let me tell you something. Don't be common. You are not common. You are peculiar. You are unique. Don't be the common man. The common man does things the same way. The world does things the same way. No, you are unique. You are different. You are of a peculiar generation. You are royal priesthood. And so don't be common because you are what? You are a gifted treasure. What a treasure we have an earthen vessel. Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have brilliance in you. You have amazing talent in you that you not even explored yet. There are some things in you that you can't even recognize right now because it seems like it's too fantastic to be true. But you will you will testify of what God is going to do in your life. You will testify of how God is going to take you from being common to extraordinary. Yes, God will take you from common to being extraordinary. God will take you from the pit to the palace. God will take you from obscurity and bring you into prominence when you serve God. God will make you to be the prime minister of nations just as he made Daniel and just as he made Daniel under every single king that came in even when he was old. He served the great grandfather and the grandfather and he was telling them, listen, you need to follow after your dad, man. Or follow after your great granddad. Now they did well, you know, because your kingdom is found in the balance and it's been wanting, but you need to turn from your ways. All right, you keep your promotion now. I right? got it, right? Because he was a man who was what? He couldn't be corrupted. He was a man who was of an excellent spirit, all right? Because he's, he topped into God. Ain't everybody gonna be cool with you pursuing your goals, pursuing excellence, pursuing the spirit of the living God? Ain't everybody find you fascinating anymore? Because they were used to be in a screw up. They used to be you talking a certain way. They used to you demeaning yourself. They were used to you just going along to get along. But now you correcting them and you said, no, 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 I ain't like, no, no, we're joking now, but don't, don't, don't start to speak the curse of my life because they'll start to curse you sometimes and you they, you say they're joking, but you got to catch and say, no, 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 no. We rebuke that. Oh yeah, we had some one, one woman, we, start, we was talking and talking and talking, then she started to curse us. And we say, oh, no, you, know, you crossed the line now. 
you're doing really good and we will listen to you because you start to curse. We had to reject that and rebuke that and be cursed and then you get mad and hang up. See, some people want to come to your life and they want to ruin you and tell you what they will tell you and have you take it. No, you got to say, no, 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 respectfully, I disagree. Respectfully, no, I'm not that and that's not what it is because you only want to have your own way because some people, like I say, they have Jezebel spirits operating in them. They have Jezebel spirits operating in them. I don't care how religious they are. They want to tell you what to do when they have no type of respect. They have no respect for the way they carry on. And so they, they wonder why they're going through what they're going through. Because they're disrespectful. They're disrespectful and they're selfish and mean. And so until they get that and check that, until they get that and check that, they'll still be going around a circle. Look at you. Look at the man in the mirror and begin to work on that man. Begin to work on that man. Work on that woman. Work on you. Begin to say, God, show me the flaws. Show me the holes in my game. Show me where I'm messing up. Holy Spirit, reveal to me why I'm not married. Reveal to me why I keep going around a circle. Reveal to me why men keep coming in my life and coming out of my life. Reveal to me why I can't seem to hold a job. Reveal to me why every month the money seems to go and there's more there's more month than there's money. Reveal to me, Lord, what am I doing? What habit am I doing? Reveal, Lord, reveal to me who is in my circle that has, be, that has become the acre in my camp. Lord, reveal to me these things. Show me that so I can be blessed. Show me how I can move with God. Show me how, Father God, uh, where I'm committing spiritual abortion. How am I so, how am I sabotaging my spiritual life? How am I destroying my own life? Lord, help me to fix this. Fix me, Lord. Fix me so I can know how to what? Move in circumstance, but also to be master of it. Master of it. Master over those things. Guys, I'm telling you right now, God is going to cause you to move in silence. You see what he did? He caused his people to move in silence. And he tell them, march around the Jordan. March around this Jordan. March around this Jericho wall. And when the priest touched the Jordan River, the, the Jordan River part, and they, they march around the silence. That looks stupid to the natural. It looks crazy. It looks crazy. You don't see it. You don't hear it. Uh, yet they were marching around seven times. The wall could, they say, they say two chariots could drive on that wall side to side. That's how thick that wall was. It was known as the impenetrable wall of Jericho. It has never been breached before. Yet the Lord told the priests to go and carry the Ark of the Covenant and march around the wall. March around it. March around the wall. Hallelujah. In silence. In silence. And no doubt there were people on the wall laughing at them. There were people on the wall throwing stuff at them. There were people on the walls speaking to them saying, you crazy people all dressed in white walking around this wall and saying nothing. Very silent. You're crazy. Huh? jeering them laughing at them when you have an original idea and you're doing something original people will laugh people will make fun they will jeer they'll tell you it can never be done it'll never be accomplished but you just watch god you stick with god and watch what god will do and guess what on the seventh time they blew the shofar they blew the trumpet and guess what the walls came tumbling down yes the same impenetrable walls came tumbling down i say to you the invisible walls that are in your life they will come tumbling down. Hallelujah. Because God has a plan for you. God has purpose for you. God has blessed you. God is opening doors for you, my, my dear friend. Hallelujah. God is doing something unique and special as we're approaching this critical time of going into 2022. God is going to what? set you up. That's why it's so important right now to take introspection of your life going into this new year. That is about a month or two away and begin to what? trouble the Lord. All right. Until he gives you a plan and a dossier for your life because God wants to what? He wants to bless you. The devil wants to corrupt you. The enemy's plan is to keep you laughing and, and not believing the promises of God. And he wants to make you feel like those invisible walls that are so thick and so impenetrable will never come down. God is saying... You are gold. You are gold. You are golden, and I will, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will bless everything you touch, and it shall turn to gold. Hallelujah! God is going to raise up prophets to your loins. God is going to raise up kings out of your loins. God is going to raise up evangelists to your loins. God is going to raise up mighty, mighty men and women of God through your loins. God says, "I'm not finished with you. My son may not look like it, but..." 
God gave me a promise on my son. My daughter might not be behaving the way she's supposed to behave, but God gave me a promise on my son and my daughter. They may be into lesbianism. They may be in the free relationship. They may be doing funny things, but I know they don't look like what God promised. My son is on crack. My son is walking around, you know, talking to the trees. But God gave me a word on him many years ago, and I know that word still stands. And I'm going to study the word till he's prayed in. God told me my, my husband coming back. God told me he's removing that, that stubborn problem from, a, from among my life. God told me he's going to promote me in the midst of what they're doing. And I don't understand because it looks like it's getting worse. As a matter of fact, they look like they try to plot to get me uh, removed from this place. But I want to tell you right now, God says, this is the day that the Lord has made. See, God don't judge after men. See, when, when Sammy, was, Sammy the prophet missed it, he missed it. Because he went to every one of Jesse's son and he was saying, Surely this must be the king. Why? Because he looked he looked anointed. He looked stately. He looked handsome. He looked like a king. He looked like he was mighty. All right? But he wasn't seeing right. The prophet was looking after things of his own eyes. And he kept saying, Is there any sons? Because everyone he'd gone to, God rejected. God keep rejecting them. And then he asked Jesse if he have any sons. Jesse's were like, Jesse didn't even think like he had no more sons. He forgot that his younger son was out in the fields afar off tending the sheep. All right? See, sometimes people forget you. You think God forgets you? God didn't forget you. They forget you. They even consider you. You even in the runnings with them. As far as they're concerned, there's nothing good coming out of you. There's no good thing to come out of Nazareth. And ain't nothing good coming out of your life. And they forget you. They write you off. You don't look good. You don't want you don't, you you don't dress the same way. You don't move like how they're moving. You don't look like that. But yet God said there's a giant on the inside of you. There's a giant killer on the, on the inside of you. There's a giant conqueror. There's a king on the inside of you. The king was always in David. The king was always in David. But God had to bring the king out of him through the trials he went through. Saul persecuted uh, King David for almost 16 years. You hear me? You can imagine if your stepdad, your king, trying to kill you out of jealousy and envy, trying to kill you for 16 years, uh, pursuing you. You on the run. You have to hide. You have to live in caves. You hear me? And yet you were called anointed to be king. And yet you had to pay this price. It didn't look like you was going to be no king. It didn't look like you was going to get no crown. As a matter of fact, it looked even worse. It looked worse because yet the prophecy did surely speak at the appointed time. Yes, your promotion is coming through. It looks like it ain't coming through. It looks like it's not there. It looks like the thing ain't happening. It doesn't seem like it. They forget you. They write you off. They even recognize that you're there when the prophet or the person said, Is there anybody here that we have to fill this position? They don't even recognize you. They don't even have you on the list. And some of them, they take you off the list. May God supernaturally put you back on the list. Yes, many times you've got testimonies of how when they prayed for people and we ministered to them, they came back and told me, said, listen, someone called me from a certain place and told me, said, my name was on the list, but somebody moved it off. And said, they put it back on the list. So my promotion coming true. One person just called me and said, prophet, they just called me and told me my promotion came true. They succeeded me. They succeeded me and told me I ain't getting my promotion. But I said, the word of the Lord shall stand on I said the word of the Lord shall stand. Yes, the word of the Lord. As a matter of fact, I told it two people recently. Two people, two people. Uh, but I told them a long time, and they said, "Well, we've been succeeded, and you know they succeeded, and you know, oh, yeah, you know, blah, blah, blah. and that word come to pass." But guess what? Guess what? They told them the words that they got succeeded. The the Lord said, "You get promoted." They tell them you get succeeded. They sent him letter. These people put in all the work. These people did all the work. These people passed all the exams. Yet they were putting in their own crimes. They were trying to. They were trying to. They were trying to. They were trying to uh, destroy the word of God. They were trying to assassinate the word of God. Say, see, look at that man. I tell you all. Yeah, see, they tell you all you get promotion. You get any promotion? Look, you succeeded. Someone has taken your place. Guess what? They called me and told me. Well, well, they sent me a message. One called me and told me. She said, Prophet, I got my promotion, and the, the head of my department told me, congratulations, you are been promoted to superintendent and you got this position and you 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 got this you got you got the authority and we're gonna give you uh, uh the the formal letter coming up in a week i think she already got the letter let me tell you something let me tell you something when man says no god says yes and guess what no doubt those who are holding her back those who are rejoicing they cry now 
They cry now because they never saw it coming. As far as they're concerned, they had her buried. They was making sure she could never get that promotion. You hear me? But the Lord said, now you have been promoted. It doesn't come from man. You hear me? Promotion comes from the Lord. And that is because she stuck with the program. She stuck with the instructions. She followed the instructions. And my issues go through hell and high water. She was going through so much things. And there were things coming after her that you'll never believe. And yet, God says, the good news shall come to you. Good news shall what? Shall be a refreshing to your soul. Good news will restore your soul. Just a brokenness, a broken bone, a, a broken spirit dry the bone. But a merry heart do like a good medicine. You will hear good news. A merry heart shall be a portion. And you will hear good news. You will get promoted in the midst of those demons and those devils and those haters. And those 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 people who have been putting you down and silently, silently working against you. Working with people in, in, in certain high places and keeping you down, yet you get promoted. I hear plenty of people have problems with, with that promotion right now. They make it plenty noise, plenty noise. But how you get this and how you get here and how you know about this and how you do it. Promotion and favor comes from the Lord. There will be people who will resent you no matter what. Yet when they was getting their promotion, when they was having their good time, you were happy for them. Now's your time now. They don't see you shine. They will keep the children of God down. They don't want to see you get your promotion. And guess what? The testimony is coming like crazy. She did get the promotion. She did get the elevation. And now there's going to be an increase. Ain't this promotion with no pay? No, this could be promotion with pay. And I told God to give it a double double. You hear me? What that means? And that means that she can get another promotion coming up in a second. Huh? The word already went for of her life. It's from the past. A double double is coming for her because what faithfulness, because of being consistent, because of honoring her word, because of not doubting the word that went forth, even when it looked like they said, She said, I got the letter here. They sent me the letter, man of God. I said, Well, God, word ain't finished yet. I said, Yeah, I know this is seed you, and I know they say what they say. I said, I know them demons, them trying. I said, God still has this, and it looked like it was actually going to go through. But now, look what happened. You too shall be promoted, you too shall be elevated. You too shall experience marriage. You too shall experience victory in the eleventh hour and destroy uh, 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 the mindset of those negative naysayers. They're gonna know that truly God is with you because what they've done to try to keep you down, what they've done to work overtime, and you getting promoted right in the midst of them. Guess what? Haman, Haman had to carry Mordecai around and had to praise him in the town and had to pull his donkey. You know hear I me? Mean? They're gonna pull your donkey and they're gonna praise you and they're gonna walk around and say, Look what God has done and look what God has favored and then they're gonna put you on the royal donkey and ride you around the whole town and favor you and bow to you because guess what? God's doing this thing for you. God is moving the Hamans out of your life. God is moving the Hamans and the haters out of your life who've been holding on grudges, who've been using laws, and who've been using people in high place to try to beat you with it and try to change times and seasons so they can afflict you. Yes, that's what they do. They want to use the times and seasons of laws that they create so they could get you to stop. They try to even get Daniel to stop praying so they could lock him in jail because they know he would stop praying because he's a man of integrity. And so they made the king find, uh, sign a phony, a phony writ and a phony decree and make him use a signet ring on it. You hear me? They trick him into doing that. And then they had to throw him in the lion's den. The Lord locked the lion's den mouth. Some of you are in the lion's den right now. And God is locking them out. You're sitting with lions. Some of the lions is on your boss. It's on your job. And some of the lions is in your house. Some of the lions is in your community. Some of the lions is in your family members. Some of the lions are all around you. But God has locked their jaws. They can't touch you. And you're prospering in the midst of what they're doing. They want to hold you down. But the Lord said, they cannot touch you because I'm sending my angel to lock their jaws. I'm locking those lions' jaws. And I'm going to turn those lions on those that have been trying to set you up. Hallelujah. It says, before the men who did that to Daniel, before they hit the ground. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The lion leaped up in the air, maybe 14 feet, and kept him and ripped them apart. Huh? Rip them apart before they even hit the ground. The Lord will rip apart those that have been fighting against you before they hit the ground. They will be devoured. You hear me? The weapon will form, but it shall not prosper because you are gold to God. God has invested too much in you to allow the enemy to destroy what he's worked so hard to build. And God is now going to take you from the pit to the palace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
God is getting you unstuck. God is getting you unstuck today, guys. You're being unstuck. Man, you're being unstuck. God is unstucking you. <laughs> All right? From the rut, from the, the miry clay that the enemy tried to use to keep you oppressed. The quicksand. The quicksand. Miry clay is quicksand. You know what quicksand is? Every time you move, you go down. Every time you move, every time you move, you go down. Every time you move, you go down. And you can't breathe in the quicksand. I remember back when we was young, there was a place in the back of the school where some young guy went and 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 he fall he fall in his pond. And the pond was a quick was a was quicksand. Alright, he died. He died. And they had to they had to, they had to excavate him out of the quicksand. Alright? God will take you to the quicksand. God will take you to Marie Claire. They want to see you sinking, sinking, sinking with no hope of resurrection. But God said, I'm resurrecting the dead things. Can these bones live again? God is resurrecting the dead dreams. These bones shall live again. According to Ezekiel 37, these bones shall live again. Sinews upon sinews, bone upon bone. And the Lord said, prophesy to the bones, son of man. And he prophesied to the bones. And he prophesied and said, breathe and live, O bones. And they lived. Amen. And he said, who are these? He said, these are the slain of the house of Israel because they have no hope. They have no hope. They have no hope in them. Do you know no hope in you is like you're dead? Do you know that if you are dead, hallelujah, that means that there's nothing that anyone could do for you? All right? Now, let's let's say I, I saw a man outside and he, he was, you know, in a car accident and I see him, you know, like me, right? You know, I say there's hope I can give him, res I can give him resuscitation, do CPR, I can save him. But if I saw a skeleton out there, I'll say, no, I ain't doing nothing with that skeleton because the skeleton is always dead. All right? That, that, that skeleton is dead. What I can do? It's already gone. God has shown you that he can do the impossible. God has shown you that I can do this thing. Then you'll know that I am God. You'll know that I'm God. I'm going to send you back to Israel, uh, to, Israel um, to, 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 to Jerusalem. I will send you back to, uh, to Israel. All right? I'll send you back to Jerusalem. You will now go back home in the right time because they were being depressed from not being able to go home. All right, the time was up. The prophecy already uh, uh, kind of like the time was up, and they were still there in captivity. All right, and the Lord said, These are the people who have been captured. Their spirit is dead. They are hopeless. Their will is broken. They feel like they'll never go home. They feel like they're cut off. That's what it means to be dead. That's what it means to be in the valley of bones. Some of you are in the valley of bones, and God is God. He's going to put sinews and flesh and skin upon you again and he's going to breathe the breath of life because everybody had written you off uh let's uh, written them off all right there's nothing coming out of that thing that thing dead that's a dead thing that relationship was dead that job was dead that promotion was dead that health life was dead all right spending all kinds of money just on your health and taking all your money dead things and you're still ain't getting healed just like the woman with the issue of blood all right just like the lady who's been down for 18 years satan was sitting on the back the Lord said, I'll do the possible. I'll cause sinew and muscles and tissues to come upon you. And then the bone stood up, bone upon bone, all right, tendon upon tendons. I'll rebuild you and I'll cause the breath to come from the four winds. Come, O breath, from the four winds. And there's a rattling and there's a shaking and there's a shaking and a rattling. And there's a sound that's coming, the sound of the abundance, the sound of resurrection. I'll resurrect the, the impossible. I'll do things that people say ain't never, never, never going to see that now. That, that's a done deal. Ain't nothing come out of this. You could never, never, never fix this thing. It's already beyond repair. It's irreparable. It is finished. It's finito. It cannot be resurrected. Even if windows were to come in heaven, you still, this prophecy is still going to come to pass. And that's what, the, that's what the king's hand told Elijah. Elijah said, you see it, but you'll not partake of it because you out of this negative prophecy. You try to counteract my prophecy. Uh, with this word, you say, even if windows in heaven will come, that prophecy will never come to pass. All right, you try to block the prophecy of the people and try to bring discouragement because you, 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 you looking to be negative because you, you looking for a reason to kill me. You want to kill me. You want to kill me. But the word of the Lord shall come to pass. You will see it, but you will not partake of it. All those who've been negative in your life, they'll watch you come to, they'll watch you come to uh, the prominence. They'll watch you come to position, but they'll have no part in it. Why? Because they were there. To be the naysayers. They were the ones who try to pick you apart. They're the ones who've been trying to speak death to you. They're the ones who've been hating on you. Alright? Hallelujah.
Haters simply means having anger towards everyone else's success. That's what haters mean. Fear means false evidence appearing real. Haters mean having anger towards everyone else's success. And fear is false evidence appearing real. Don't you worry about what they're saying. The oil of God will fill you. The oil of God will fill you. You will not hear wind nor see rains, yet you must dig ditches. Dig the ditches because it's coming. In other words, you need to put in the work. You need to put in the time. You need to act like it's happening. You need to pray to God. You need to move like it is. You need to stimulate and push God. And you need to encourage God and make God move on your behalf. You see what the, you see what the woman did who wanted justice from the wicked judge? She didn't give him no rest until Zion was established, until she got justice. Give the Lord no rest until you establish Zion. There are people that will stay in the zone. They will stay in the posture of prayer until the birthing takes place. You are about to birth something and God is about to give you the necks of your adversaries. You are about to possess your possession. You are about to hear good news. You are about to enter into your prophetic Canaan. You are about to enter into your prophetic land of milk and honey. You are about to meet your prophetic Boaz. You're about to meet your prophetic root. You're about to hear good news. Yes, I'm saying this right now, and I'm speaking it to you. Yes, it looked like it's dead. It looked like it's a skeleton. It looked like it's a dry bone in the valley of dry bones, in the valley of debt. You hear me? It's the valley of the shadow of death. That was where they would kill the babies and worship Molech. It was known as the Gehenna, or the pit. That's where the valley of the valley of death, the valley of dry bones. This is the place where they want you to stay stuck, stuck. Stuck, 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 but you are being unplugged, you are being activated, you are being renewed, you are being restored, you are being regenerated, you are being revived, you are being recalibrated, you are being refreshed because you've been through something, you've been through burnout, you've been through restlessness, and now God is saying this is the season of rest for some of you that are listening. You are about to rest, you are about to rest, and after you rest <clears throat> and catch yourself, excuse me, you are about to come into your own. You're going to rest for season. God's going to restore you. God's going to revive you. And then one word of blessings, one word of increase, one good word, one good news, and all of that pain will go. Many times when you are birthing, a woman when she's birthing a child, there's pain, there's even anger and madness and frustration because this baby ain't coming true. But the minute the baby is born and you hear, I say, hold your baby. All of that pain, and all of that hardship of carrying that baby for nine months and laboring and going through all those things and your hormones changing, your body changing, you know, your nose changing, your hair changing, your neck getting dark, whatever the case may be, you know, the baby, you know, just, just kicking and causing problems and you saying, Jesus, when this thing come? I won't get this baby to be so bad, I might cut my belly open. But when you give birth and you see that beautiful baby and you hear, that's the sweetest sound, all that pain, all that hardship will be a thing of the past because now you birth your blessing you birth your blessing some of you are in the birthing process. some of you are seven months some of you are six months some of you are about to give gestation which is the number nine is the birthing process it is gestation it is consummation and some of you are about to realize this thing but it's a push they say push you got to push they didn't push come on push push Push, all right. Push now, push, push. And he's like, ah. Then they tell the man, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> Look what you do to me. <laughs> then the man pass out. When he out, pass out. They pass out. Some of them pass out. They look, ah, because they can't believe that this, this thing, you know, the way nine pounds coming out, you know, a little small hole. But that's the miracle of birthing, all right. So the giant that God is that has in you. Some of you giants in your own right. Some of you giants in your own right. But you've not fully been birthed out yet. Yet. Push. 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 Pray. Push. Hallelujah. Pray until something happens. <laughs> I'll, I'll after the me all day. Pray until something happens. Push. Push. One final push. You ever see someone run a race and they do a relay and they pass it off the last baton to that person 
and this person has to make the last sprint and they get they get the baton to him and that person pushes off and gets a good push and that person brings home the goal you too shall bring home the goal of the season hallelujah you too shall bring home the goal you too shall bring home the goal because God has taken you out of being stuck into a position of flow and a position of blessings and increase and favor and no one can do anything about it. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. I think that is our time, guys. And I love you all very, very greatly. And it's been a blessing to once again come into your, uh, to your living room or wherever you're at and bring this word. Amen. Now, Father, we see this word of the blood of Jesus. We come against backlash, whiplash, counterattack, open dream and scandal. We curse every foul spirit that will steal this word. Hallelujah. And we see this word up until it manifests in their life. And thank you for the wonderful testimonies that you guys have been sending in. Keep sending the testimonies in. The Bible says be overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. Keep sending in the testimonies. Keep sending the testimonies in. Because as you're doing that, you're reinforcing your own blessing and you are giving the enemy a black eye because the enemy was fighting you. He's fighting you from you coming into your own. Send the testimonies in. Particularly if I've spoken that word to your life, you need to send the testimony in. There's some people who would never ever send the testimony in knowing that God has done this thing and the word was uttered through the ministry. But guess what? God still gets the glory at the end of the day. But it is appreciated when you do that because it lets us know that our prayers were not in vain and that we help birth this baby. We might not have been the one who pushed, but we might have been the the, the, the mid guys there saying, come on, let's go, you can do this. Come on, be in your corner. We were cheerleading for you. And we were holding you up, just like how just like how Ben-Hur and uh, uh, Aaron had to hold up Moses' hand. And whenever they, whenever they left the hand, what? The Israel, Israelite Joshua and, Joshua and company prevailed. Whenever the hand fell, then... Uh, you know, the, uh, the other army started to win. So you always need people to lift your hand up, hallelujah, and to have your back. Amen? So God bless you. God bless you. In the Jesus. Amen. I know this word was for me. No more stuck. Someone says this word was for me. Someone also says, I can take this word and I can own this word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone says, a very timely word, prophet. Uh, the woman of God says, it's a very timely word. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening, prophet. It was a timely, timely work. Amen. That's that's from a good friend of mine. She said it was a really timely word. Praise the Lord for that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you guys share it for me? Those of you who haven't shared it, please share it. Can you guys share it for me? If you have, uh, if you have a, if you have a crew that you can share it to, please share it, because we need to get the word out. We're trying to get it from around these configurations and these algorithms and these analytics that are really trying to block the word. Thank you, Prophet Amalekia. We love you and appreciate you. But well, thank you for this timely Rainbow word. We receive it and we run with it. God bless you, Wani so much very very powerful woman of god hallelujah and we look forward to the great things god has done in her life and in the season hallelujah we bless god for wanting amen hallelujah and we've seen we've seen the hand of god move from wanting in so many ways and that is only the beginning god is going to do some amazing things for wanting going to 2022 so she can get ready and as she is in her birthing process so too shall she experience victory amen Amen. Kimmy Kim says, victory. <laughs> yes, amen. Kimmy Kim says, amen. Praise God. God bless you. Demetrius says, amen. Hallelujah. We bless God for all of you. And we uh, definitely pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was going to just prophesy into your lives today, but God had me to shift. So maybe next week, God's willing, I will just begin to pick you out as the Spirit lead, and I will speak a detailed word in your life the Lord leads me. Amen. So I want you guys to prep for that, prepare for that. And um, we're going to probably do a short teaching, and then I'll, I'll minister to most of you guys. So we will release a word. Amen. Hallelujah.
God bless you too, Kibi. God bless you as well. Or maybe Zion. It's hospitalized for chest infection. I cover Zion right now. You all cover Zion. You all pray for Zion. We cover Zion. Thank you. Girl. Uh, thank you from word. Yeah. Ole and Connie. Yes, from England. God bless you. God bless you, Phil and Connie. God bless you guys. God bless you, O'Connor. Awesome word, Prophet. God bless you, O'Connor. Uh, yes, I suppose we're probably going to connect with you um, this week, Connor. O'Connor, just have a chat. Thank you, Jesus. S. Kane. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Doherty. Uh, Cash, God bless you. Zena. Trish Alberry, God bless you as well. We've seen some new faces today, which is a blessing. It's always a blessing to see new people. But we thank God, we thank God for our faithful ones, but we, we also love to see new faces. Amen. It's, uh, it's, it's encouraging. But we thank God that God is a God of awesomeness. Amen. And we know that God is in the house. And the anointing is here. Thank you, Jesus. Veronica Brooks, God bless you. We pray for Zion right now. We cover Zion with the blood of Jesus. You all say a short prayer for Zion. Um, someone said Zion. That's all I saw. Is in the hospital with a, with a chest infection, I think. We cover Zion with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All of you agree with, agree with me. We cover Zion with the blood of Jesus. We cancel every chest infection over that child. And Father God, we release the fire of the living God to flow in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We release healing. Uh, we release healing. Uh, someone said, blow the shofar over him. I think I'm going to do that. Let me let me blow the shofar over Zion. Let me blow the shofar over Zion. Amen? Let Zion. Let trumpet be heard in Zion. <laughs> let the trumpet be heard in Zion. I like that. In the name of Jesus. Shofar over Zion and we cover him with the blood of Jesus. We release angels to go and minister to Zion right now with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, we, we know that we need 2,000 but 2,000. Well, we, we got about 30, 40 people out here right now. God, let them, Father God, uh, send up a prayer for Zion. Thank you, Lord, for healing the child. We ask that your will be done. God, we thank you for the healing. God, we ask that, Father God, whatever has been attacking this child, every spirit of Lilith, the night, the night crib monster, sudden death syndrome, we break your power. And we curse you the root. And we cover this child with the blood of Jesus. Everything attached to this child that's not of God, we come out of the fall to the ground and we break his power right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We just give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor for what you already done for Zion. We just thank you already that the healing already took place. The healing already took place for this child and it's already done. The complete healing is already done. Thank you, Father, right now. Every spirit of, of COVID and this fierce, fierce psychosis that comes with it, we bind this thing up in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And God, we ask you to protect your, we protect your child, Lord. You know, your, the angels behold your face. The angels behold your face, Lord, in the name of Jesus. God, we cover this child and his destiny. He must be having an amazing destiny because the enemy sees the star even whilst they uh, just come out of the womb. He knows the star. And from the time he sees the star, he's trying to figure out ways that he can take them out. We curse every spirit of death and premature death. And we cancel as a sign right now and speak life. And we speak the principle of life and we speak the healing word to, to Zion. Let the healing word go forth now in the name of Jesus and locate him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we will give you all the glory and all the praise. I see my good friend, Prophet Tracy. God bless you, Prophet Tracy. Good to see you, one man of God. It's always a pleasure. God bless you. I see uh, Miriam, Joseph. God bless you, woman of God, as usual. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for what you've done today. We thank you for what you're doing already. We thank you right now, Father God. We pray for Susan right now. We bring, we bring Susan... Father God, before you right now, and we cover Susan with the blood of Jesus. We cover Sister Anderson with the blood of Jesus. 
I go, whatever she's going through, whatever she needs, you are everything she needs. You're the doctor, you're a healer, you're a husband, you're a way maker, you're her finances, Lord. Provide it for the woman of God in the name of Jesus. You didn't bring her this far to fail. Even the word of the Lord that has spoken over life many years ago, God, she's in the process of this word. Now, Father God, whatever the enemy's been trying to do to, to counteract and to, and to fight the word, we decree that it falls to the ground. And we decree the word of the Lord shall come to pass and will come to pass. And Father God, we decree and declare that whatever she needs, whatever is needed, Lord, you will bring it to her. Even the good news that the Lord shall give to her. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release it to be so. And I release the shofar over, over Susan as well. In the name of Jesus. Susan, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I break the power of the adversary over her life and I cancel it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I cover Rainier, I cover Rainier with the blood of Jesus Christ and whatever is her need, whatever Rainier needs, Lord, you be that to you be that thing that she needs, Lord, and you be what she needs at the time. You meet her at the point where she's at, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for being what we need, looking past our faults and seeing our needs. Lord, thank you for looking past our faults. Thank you for judging after the after the course of men, but seeing what we really need, seeing what we really went through, seeing, Father God, the hurt and pain on the inside that causes the developed walls of resistance, Father God, and lack of trust because of the, the continuous hurt and pain. Father, thank you for seeing past that, Lord, and removing every wall or partition that has become a self-imposed prison. In the name of Jesus Christ, I imagine. destroy every stubborn problem in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stubborn problem, stubborn problem, long-standing problems, going around in circles, repetitive repetitive cycles of the same thing at a certain time of the year. Every death spirit that wants to come and take people at a certain time of the year or family members, I break you right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Wherever you come in in debt, whether it be debt of career, debt of debt of blessings, debt of, debt of uh, resources, debt of opportunities, Debt of 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 the of ministry or the thing that God has sent to you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I will release the shofar over over uh, um, Wani's home and her business, Amen, and over her life. I release this right now for you, Vani. This is for Wani. This is for Wani. Okay, it's being done. Release the shofar over all that concerns you, Wani, and we speak healing and blessings and favor and increase to everything that you put before the Lord and everything you've said there. We thank God that it is already done and we, we await the, the praise report and the testimony. Hallelujah. We await the testimonies. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We await the testimonies because God is breaking up stubborn yokes, long-standing yokes are being broken. Young, long-standing yokes, long-standing problems, long-standing things that never seem to really go they go for a while they come back again they just like they, they they cyclical all right we just speak the healing word to that situation right now hallelujah and we stand upon the door and we thank god that he's already removing the ancient boundaries where the enemy says you're not gonna go uh it's only so far i speak the healing word for shug right now and i release the show for the shug Shug right now, and I release it to Hallelujah to uh, Nicole in the name of Jesus. I release the sound of the shofar, Hallelujah to Nicole and everybody else that under the sound of my voice. The shofar is breaking down stubborn problems. It is a mighty weapon of of destructive power because it acts as the voice of God. Even now, the the. The, the, the invisible walls of Jericho are coming down. It might not look like it in the natural, but they are coming down over your lives. And whatever the Jericho uh, wall represents to you in your life is coming down. It is coming down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is coming down. Hallelujah. It's coming down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Of it is being destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, and we honor you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, the bonds of wickedness are being broken. Carrie Ann, you said it very well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you have a testimony, please send it to me. I'll put it up for you. Um, if I if I, um, if I deem it necessary. And you don't have to put your name if you don't want to. Hallelujah. Just you can give like, you know, just say, you know, blessings or whatever happened. And we'll post it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because we recognize that we recognize that the enemy's been trying to shut us down from the testimonies, amen. And trying to uh, turn people against it, but because you know, the enemy doesn't like that. The enemy doesn't like to see you, you know, testifying of what God has done for you and how you overcome and and your testimony is encouraging someone else who's going to do the same thing and probably need to hear what you have to say. Never doubt your journey. Never be ashamed of your journey. Your journey was designed by a loving father to use it to what? Help somebody else. Your your journey is not for you. Your problems that you go through is not for you. It is for someone else. So you can impact their life, amen? And people are watching by you, no they're not. The only Bible some people will ever read is your life. They look at your life. They look at the good, the bad, the ugly, they watch you fall, get up, and they watch you move on, and they're looking at that, and they are, they are, they're marveling. They're gonna tell you. Sometimes, every now and then, one might come and say, boy, I've been watching you and been encouraged. But they looking, and they're seeing. Yeah, they're watching, and they're looking, and they're seeing. And so is the great cloud of witness, all right? They're looking. They're looking into this thing of salvation and they're wooing and cheering us on and they're watching and even the angels are looking at this thing called salvation and they're 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 servants of and messengers of God sent to the hairs of salvation. Amen. So God called the Hebrews. So God wants us to be uh, on our best behavior at all times because they're they're watching, amen. And you know, I'm not saying you're gonna be perfect, I'm just saying that you're gonna stick with God, amen. Because even God will turn your mess in the message, amen. You can't lose. You can't lose. Amen. He makes beauty for ashes. And he makes all things beautiful in his time when you with God. Amen. So you can't lose. Even the negative is a positive when you in God. My journey is not for me. That statement brought tears to my eyes. God bless you for that one. God. Hallelujah. I got an A in my first course. But wow. Man, I gotta blow the show up of Shannon. Shannon is awesome. She got an A in her course. This was a word prophesied to the woman of God, and now she's doing it. She's in school. Let's got an A, mighty God. Praise the Lord, Chatton. That's amazing. Hallelujah. She got an A in her first, her first course in the schooling, and her first project. I think it was a, I think it was a group thing. I think I'm not sure, but they had everybody to show up and everybody to do their part. Praise the Lord. She got an A. Thank you, Jesus. May she continue to get an A and and finish with. Uh, with, with 4.0 average or whatever the case may be. Amen. Top honors. Top honors. Excellent job, Shannon. Excellent job. Excellent job, Bonita. Excellent job to Carol as well. Hallelujah. This is good. This is good. This is good. And we give God all the glory because it's marvelous in our sight. Amen. It's God's doing. It's God's doing. We give Him glory. There's no flesh just going to glory in God's presence. There's no flesh. It's simply God. Amen. It's all God. It's all you, Father. We give you the praise and all the honor. And we say publicly, as, as I'm speaking here too, I am just led to, to just make an altar call. If you've not made the Lord your God and not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, this is the time right now. This, this is very certain times. We live in some strange times. No man has promised tomorrow. And you might have been dilly-dallying and playing on the wall, all right, and sitting on the fences and straddling the fences, all right? But now it's time for you to make a decision for the Lord. If you want to do that and you decided to make up your mind, pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come before you in the name of the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. I ask, Lord, right now that you come into my heart. Make me, Father God, make me a vessel of honor. Live in my heart. I surrender my life to you. I give my life to you, Lord. Raise me up to be a mighty man. Teach me your ways. I accept you as Lord and Savior. I believe that you died and rose again and are seated at the right hand of power, authority, and you ever lifted in the seat for us. And I come to you as a child knowing that you've given me a new life and that I cannot come to God on my own except through you. And I know that you are the one true God and I've proven you time and time again, but I know I was running from you, but now I surrender. If you've said that and if you've done that, then welcome family of God. Welcome in, guys, because because you now become a part of the elect. Amen? You call the elect and saint. And, and now it's just time for you to just grow in God. 
find yourself around believers that will encourage you, lift you up, get yourself in a good church, connect with connect with those who are like faith and precious faith, read your Bible every day, and stay connected, amen, stay connected, amen, and recognize that it is a process, it's not perfection overnight, it is a growing process, amen, and so if you've done that, um, may God may God bless you, and you are now a brother and sister in the Lord, amen, and it's very simple, people make it complicated, God wants to make everything simple, simple, K-I-S-S, -S. keep it simple, simple, all right? And the best thing in life is free, amen? And salvation is free, amen? You only have to take it. As I say, you can leave the house of water, but you can't make a drink. You have to now walk through the door. You have to now make the decision. You're not too young to make the decision because at the age of accountability, you can't do that, amen? So you must, you must make the choice because this is a very strange time. No one knows when their clock will be punched. No one knows when the master will call you home. No one knows uh, what could happen. But our time and season are in the master's hand. So when you die in the Lord is a blessed thing. Amen? When you die in the Lord is a, is a, is a homecoming. Precious, the passing of the saints. Amen? When they die in the Lord. All right? It's, it's precious. It's a beautiful thing. All right? But those who have no hope, that's why atheists are most people miserable because they die in, and they don't have no expectation of what it is from the other world. All right? There's another world that is eternality and it's beyond what we can think or imagine. It's a world that is that is you know so brilliant and so beautiful that we can't even understand it all right it's way beyond what we could ever think of this is just a shadow of the heavenly realities amen but remember now the lord said he can bring the new jerusalem down so he can terraform this place he can transform this place amen into a heavenly abode because he will make us dwelling with man and what a glorious day god is the light of heaven right now they don't need no sun they don't need no sun because his glory lights up the whole uh, universe all right, in heaven, all right? And listen, there's no shadow in heaven. Why? Because that's how bright he is. There's no shadow turning. There's no variance. There's no, there's no degradation. There's no, there's no corruption of his purity, all right? And his absolute holiness. Yet he reached out to man through his son and, and, and made a way back from our fallen state, amen? And so time for you to make the decision, all right? You don't know if this could be a last time. Many, many people are just, they're giving up the ghosts, you know, and it's because of what's coming on the earth. All right, so make your election sure, and, and if you're not, if, you, or if you're backslidden, then it's time to renew your faith. Amen, if you're backslidden and you know you're not really supposed to be in God, then it's time for you to say, God, you know, give me that fresh oil, give me that fresh anointing. Take me back to that place when I just was so in love with you and that place where I need a fresh infilling. I've been, I've been, you know, burned out and I've been, you know, uh, totally totally dried up you know i'm in a drought all right spiritually and i need you to fill me up lord fill me once again give me fresh wine from the wine skin you cannot put new wine and old wine skin it won't contain it it'll burst it so you have to get fresh wine for fresh wine skin you need a deep in filling you can't go to the same old things old people old situations gotta say new things and that's why you've been frustrated that's why you've been you know, at that place where you feel like you're not moving because God is saying, come up higher. That old season was there and it was good for that time. But God is not there anymore. He's moved now. All right. And and you got to move with the cloud. You have to shift with the shift. That's what God is saying to you. And that's why this frustration and, and the feeling of, you know, spiritual dryness because God is saying, I'm challenging you to deeper heights and horizons and you need to come up higher in me because I've opened a gateway and a door for you so you can come into my holies of holies. Amen. You're in the outer courts. It is good. But that time is over. Time for you to come into true intimacy and sup with the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. And I will see you guys real soon. Amen. And like I said, we have some announcements. We'll, we'll put it on. We try to work on some other platforms as well, but we see that working. I have it playing right now, but I don't see nobody showing up. But we'll, we'll work it out. We'll figure out how to do it. <laughs> we'll be able to sync everything up. Amen. So God bless you guys. Love you all. And I'll see you real soon.